This week on the Jock and Nerd Podcast, we've got a listener-sponsored review of the 2012 action movie Dread. Plus, we break down all the announcements from the Marvel panel at this year's D23 presentation. All that and more in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Monday, September 12th, 2022. Hey, what's up? It's Taylor Gray, the voice of Ezra Bridger on Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Oh yeah, what's up, listener? How's it going? Welcome, welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast, where we give you comic book and superhero TV and movie news, reviews, and whatever we choose. Jock and Nerd! My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's the nerd. And joining us, he is the law. They call him Rug Dread, but we call him Rug Boy. What's up, Rugs? Yeah, polish my helmet, Imran. Oh, you need that helmet polished, sir? <laughs> yeah, with your tongue, sir. <laughs> There's a lot of... We get the dick joke right in. That's good. Helmets... Immediately. Judge Dredd, all wrapped up in one joke. My Lovely. helmet needs polishing, Imran. <laughs> Just like Mandalorian. <laughs> but you can't take it off. No. Uh, all right, there's the dick joke out of the way. It's part of the contract you have agreed yeah, to, listener. I fulfilled my quota. You didn't see Let's the, yes, the news. There's fine print on the website. Let's get to it. We have a lot to discuss. We got a great review and a lot of MCU news. Let's hit it. The Jock, the Jock and Nerd Podcast. I'm talking about D23 happened uh, last weekend. Big pr- uh, presentation over the course of three days in California. Marvel was there. Disney, of course, is presented by Disney. So they're putting out all their Marvel, Disney, Pixar, Star Wars. Big Never. announcements. Did I ask why it was called D23? Uh, no, that's a good question. Why is it called D23? Why is it called? It's not on the 23rd. There's not like 23 things of Disney, is there? I don't know. What's the significance? I don't know. The year... Walt Disney found the company in 1923. Oh, 1923. shit. 1923. That's why I knew there had to be some reason. Oh, okay. Uh, but you guys going into this, we were all pretty geeked up because there was tons of crazy rumors <laughs> flying around. We uh, discussed some, I believe, last episode. Yeah. That's right. And just, just to we'll start it like this, we'll put it out of there. Uh, none of that shit happened. Oh, shit. The majority of, majority of it was bullshit. So. Oh, uh, it's, uh, what we said, yeah, what we thought was going to happen. So John Boy- Boyega is not the new Black Panther. No, that was the big casting with Boyega and Denzel Washington, Giancarlo Esposito, Henry Cavill. It's all bullshit, bullshit, lame. That's all right. They still did a bunch of things, mostly sticking to Phase Five properties. Uh, and there was a lot of footage shown only to the people at D twenty three. So good exclusive time for them. Uh, so let's break down. We're just going to break down the Marvel presentation kind of in order of how it went. It's Of course, it starts with a live performance of Rogers the Musical and that song. I can do this all day. <laughs> That's a great song. <laughs> uh, and they did it live. There's a whole band. I watched this video. I was like, oh, my God, that's fun. And then uh, the cast of Black Panther, Kevin Feige comes out, you know, does his spiel, brings on Ryan Coogler. He introduces the cast of Black Panther, Wakanda forever. There was footage shown. Anthony, what did you read anything about what they showed here? Uh, they showed the Queen yes, in, with the UN, I believe, and they would think it was post them catching the Dora Milaje basically catching, I think it might have been the United States or some other nation trying to steal Vibranium. Yeah, it's a, it, the, the clips apparently were all focused on Vibranium, and now that Wakanda's out in the world... All the other countries are like, hey, why don't you share this vibranium? It's uh, it's pretty cool. Can we have yeah, some? There, there's also a detail that people were speculating will be significant in the movie, and that vibranium is apparently not detectable in metal detectors. Oh, that's going to be important. You know that's a plot point that's going to come up. Uh, hmm. But that could be a problem. If you can't detect the vibranium, everybody wants the vibranium. Uh, I didn't think there was a fight scene with Namor. Anyways, people were raving about this. They say it looked better than the original movie. 
But the Fah- bi- Fahi was quoted as saying this is the biggest thing they've done. Yeah. He introduces it. This is the biggest thing we've done. That first trailer looked amazing. It gave me chills. I can't wait to what? see this. What? You didn't, what? The happened? biggest thing they've done after, after like, they've done, like, oh Endgame? It just seems it. like hyperbole, yes. What? Although, although you doing that what? That was spot on. <laughs> that was amazing. Like I just the drop. played the yeah. clip. <laughs> Oh, oh I that said that? Nuts. I didn't even realize yeah. that you had said it. Yeah, you. I didn't know what just happened there. I thought I pressed I thought, the button. I thought he pressed the button, but yeah. No, that was, oh. that was live. That was that was real. Okay, so what does that <laughs> mean? I really do that, yeah. <laughs> Bigger than Endgame, the biggest thing they've done. I mean, you got to imagine there's underwater nations. There's, uh, you know, soldiers and armies and big battles on land, on the water. Hyperbole a little bit, maybe. He's good at yeah, that. Yeah, probably. He is good at. Apparently, he did this. He's got to promote the movie, right? Yeah, and he does this presentation like off prompter. Like all of this is just like off the fly. He's a very good presenter. But I think the biggest deal came out today, Anthony. You turned me on to this, and now it's on uh, a bunch of places. This rumor, also being shared by the Weekly Planet podcast, now that Ryan Coogler is in talks to direct Avengers Secret Wars. Geek boner. Nice. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. What do you think about that? I think it's a good pick. I I think it's a, a very good pick. I think he probably, I, I think they're probably very impressed with Wakanda Forever and the scope of it and the amount of characters. And they went, you can, you've graduated, buddy. You get the, the Avengers film. It, they, they like picking guys that are, that make a good, uh, you know, Marvel film in, in, a well recognized Marvel film, and that and they crop they they pick them and they they put them in Avengers. You know that you've seen that happen with uh, what's his face the Russos. They did yeah they did uh, Winter Soldier and Civil War. You see now with Daniel Destin Cretton, he did Shang Chi, and now you're seeing it with potentially Ryan Coogler with the two Black Panther films. I think it bodes well because he does get good performances out of his actors, yeah. and I think yeah that's uh, pretty important. When you're doing something like uh, Secret Wars, oh so, yeah, I'm excited about that with a yeah, huge like cast. Yeah, and and he kind of brought his team into Black the original Black Panther, and it had a distinct look. He he really cared about getting it, getting the Wakanda and all the different factions looking a little bit different. So it's a beautiful, or a big, colorful movie. Potentially yeah. like Secret Wars. Could work. It's a beautiful movie. The second one looks also beautiful in cinematography. So I think it handled this. Let me ask you this. D- the first Black Panther made a billion dollars. Does he need to hit the billion dollar mark again to be successful with this second movie? Or is like everything's all weird enough that he could be forgiven if it doesn't hit a billion? It, it's crazy because in this phase of Marvel's, uh, you know, where, where they're at right now. Yeah. Um, nothing's really making a ton of money, so yeah, yeah. like l- like it used to. So we had like a couple of big openings with like Doctor Strange and shit, but like uh, and and Spider Man. Well, Spider Man made a ton of money, but the other ones have they've done okay, but they haven't made as much. Far from Home, I think, cracked a billion. And it, yeah, no, Far from Home had. The, what I'm saying is that they're not breaking records; they're just kind of either like, they're meeting expectations, I guess. So. It makes it even crazier that Top Gun is like the only movie this year to break a billion dollars, and it's like fifth highest domestic grossing now. It's passing up movies. It's kind of wild that it, that non superhero movie, uh, not to uh, tangent onto Top Gun Maverick, but that's really the only movie this year that's that's made those kind of numbers. So it's going to be interesting. Okay, let me ask you this: as we go through each of these pro- uh, properties, what is your excitement level now uh, for Black Panther? What kind of forever? At a scale of one to ten, sure. Yeah, I like an eight. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd say probably an eight and a half. I think I'm I'm there with for you. for what it's worth. The Spider-Man No Way Home did one point nine billion. Oh shit, almost two billion. Oh. Doctor Strange made nine fifty three. Oh, it didn't. Yeah. Love and Thunder seven fifty six. Yeah. Shang Chi four thirty two. Eternals four oh two. Wow. Yeah, and Love and Thunder is now on Disney Plus, so you can watch it again. Did Godzilla vs. Kong make more than Shang Chi? Godzilla vs. Oh yes, it did. Oh shit, we're seventy. Oh shit! Wow! Oh shit! Nice. So yeah. <laughs> uh, the movie stinks, though. No one likes that movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> the movie sucks. 
it's it. You got it's a, you got to take the silver lining. Where are you? Okay. I love that movie. I think it's. I love that. I, I I had a great time with that movie. Yeah, <laughs> I am pretty excited for Black Panther. What kind of forever? I'm pretty psyched. That's like. Yeah, I think it's gonna be good. I think it's gonna be amazing. Uh, Iron Heart is in it. That leads us into the next thing they talked about was the Iron Heart. Disney Plus show, Riri Williams, they had footage that they showed just to the people there. Uh, they did announce Anthony Ramos, who was uh, in In the Heights, that musical. He has joined the cast as the character Parker Robbins, otherwise known as The Hood, who practices dark magic. So the show is going to be about magic and tech kind of clashing, dark magic and technology. With as Williams. it used to be with Iron Man in The Mandarin. So, uh, oh, that's yeah. right. That's what it was supposed. To, that was what that always was. Yeah. That's what they it never was really explored to. that in the Iron Man series. Yeah. No, but it's kind of cool that they're now going to do that. I think I've been waiting to yeah, see this. Yeah, now that Robert Downey Jr.'s dead, yes, he'll never get to enjoy <laughs> the magic. <laughs> Fucking me, that dumbass Mandarin. <laughs> so piss me off. Whatever. Tony Stark will Iron never Man see 3. his dream fulfilled. Go fuck yourself, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that's Ironheart. Uh, listener, let us know. You can join this conversation, actually. Join our Facebook group uh, where we love to geek out and there's spoiler threads. And we'll use some of your comments at the end of the show. It is closed exclusive just for you. It's called Jock and Nerd Nation. There's a link in the description. Search for it. Join it. We'd love to have you. OK, let's get to our first trailer. We can actually talk about. They showed a trailer for this one off special presentation Halloween special called Werewolf by Night. This is a crazy black and white 40s uh, looking Universal Monsters inspired uh, trailer for this like a monster movie with right. Gael, uh, Gael, what's his name? Gael Bernal Garcia. I didn't say that right. Gael Garcia Bernal. Sorry, I had that backwards. Uh, playing Jack Russell, Werewolf by Night. Directed by the composer, Michael Giacchino. He's the composer. He wrote all the music. He's directing this. Rugs, what did you think about this trailer? Thought it was fucking weird. It, it is weird? <laughs> I mean, uh, it seems like they have the werewolf like confined in some kind of cage at one point, and then you see Man-Thing. and Yes. Oh, there's a lot of weird shit going on. It seems... Um, I don't, are you are you convinced that this is going to stay black and white or is it going to go color? In oh, the actual? that's a good question. I hope I've, they, I've heard it's going to be back in black and white. Yeah, they're trying to capture a look, a feel here. I love Universal monster movies, not because they're good, because they evoke that old Hollywood quality. You know, of the, when they were doing that shit, when they were doing a shared universe before, yeah. all of this. Yeah. Um. So you know. Special effects, makeup, all that stuff. I love that stuff. So it does, it does evoke that. And I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully the werewolf looks cool. I can get a good look at it. And I think that's by design. So uh, this is all going to pin on how cool is the fucking werewolf. Werewolf's got to look cool. Uh, Anthony, yeah. what are you making of this? This thing's got like scratchies and film grain and crazy shots. So I don't know if I've ever said this on the show, but growing up when I was in probably like 10, 11, somewhere around there. I got obsessed with the Universal Monsters and watched all those movies nice. around that age. So I was also a big fan of these movies as a kid. And obviously this evokes all of that. And it's a style we haven't seen yeah. Marvel do. And I think just based on the trailer, you know, we haven't seen the move, the, the special. They definitely are nailing it. Like I, It feels just like that. So I really enjoyed the trailer. I have some questions about how it really fits in and yeah. is Werewolf by Night going to be in future stuff? That's a good question. All that stuff kind of doesn't really jive, but fuck it. So if as long as it's good, I'll I'll, I'll watch it. I I was if they would have released just a a paint by the numbers trailer for this, right. I don't know if I would have been really all that pumped about it at all. But the fact that they went like in this route, it, hit, it struck a chord with me and I like it. Yeah, no, I uh, I agree. This was different. I was not expecting this, but I dig the I dig the aesthetics. It's a little silly, but that's you know they're kind of playing into it. But also, it seems like it has a good horror. But vibe. for Halloween, it's perfect. For Halloween, right. it is a one off. And to your question, you're right. Will Werewolf by Night join the MCU? Is it a, if it's a one off, does it count? 
man, you see a quick shot of man thing, which is like Marvel Swamp thing, which is pretty cool. Not the penis. No. The actual Swamp thing kind of much. <laughs> Not the man thing, but the Swamp. The man well, I think it's definitely thing. Marvel. It's in the Marvel Universe because it's produced by Marvel Studios. Yeah, no, it is. And there's other characters like Elsa Bloodstone and Simon Garth, who someone is just called Zombie. I think you see him. And I think these are all characters. So it's if they introduce him, they can use him with other things. And it's kind of I even like the special presentation like logo treatment in the beginning, like. But I think Marvel, like especially uh, Marvel TV, they're just throwing shit out there, yeah. and then mm-hmm. yeah. if it sticks, they'll use it again. Yeah. If it doesn't, then they'll just forget it ever happened or change it. So, that's a good better. point. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. But the little touches, like you even see, remember the little circles in the corner of the film, but when the film would, reel would change, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you see them do that in this trailer. There's a little white star. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah it's all like I, I liked that. I liked I love the that. end too, where you have the girls scre- kind oh, of screaming, they pause on yeah. her face, yeah. and then we're wolf by yeah. night. No, and the logo yeah. treatment with the long shadow is just it's just perfectly done. Like they've nailed that '40s Universal Monsters aesthetic. So props to them. Okay, next thing is another trailer, Secret Invasion, uh, with uh, a Sam Jackson looking fucking badass in a large part of this as Nick Fury. Anthony, this time, we'll start with you. What did you see? What did you like? What do you think? Uh, I liked the tone of the trailer. I would say it's definitely going to be different than the comics because I don't think they have... The comics was... You know, who who's a scroll type thing and you had a whole bunch of heroes. I don't think they can really do that yeah. with a TV show. But I did like the overall vibe and the the mystery aspect and you kind of not really knowing who's what. I like the way it starts with Sam Jackson looking like an alien <laughs> oh, in the yeah. shadow and oh, then it yeah. becomes him. Yeah. So yeah, I think it looks it looks pretty good. I like the shot where uh I forget the actor actor's name, the the black guy. Uh, ben, it's a uh, deer. What's his name? Yeah, that guy. Uh, he, he was uh, Malcolm ben X. And he was Malcolm Kingsley X. Kingsley Ben-Adir. Yeah, he, he, he was Malcolm X yeah. in uh, the Miami movie. Miami something, I forget yeah. what it was called. Uh, uh, one Night in Miami. One Night in Miami. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So I like the shot where he, you know, he's all, there's many versions there's of him. There's a bunch of him. He grabs him. Yeah. Yeah, it, it looks interesting. I, I think it's a well-cut trailer. So I, I'm, it's one of those things where, again, similar to Werewolf by Night, if the trailer was kind of whatever, Probably wouldn't have liked it, but you got enough people. I mean, you got Sam Jackson, you got Emilia Clark, you Dude, got Kingsley, Kingsley Benedier, Ben Mendelsohn, Olivia Coleman, Olivia Coleman, Colby yeah, Smolders, so. Maria Hill, uh, Martin Freeman. You see him real quick. A fantastic I heard, cast. I heard Olivia Coleman is supposed to be a version of Union Jack or related to Union Jack yeah. or or she's. Yeah. Or something. So like they that. got a pretty good cast. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things going for it. The only the drawback to me is is the fact that. It's just not as going to be as big a storyline as it was in the comics. Yeah, everybody was Skrulls in the comics. That was the crazy part. Right. Uh, and then Don Cheadle, of course, as Rhodey. Oh, yeah, Don uh, Cheadle. Ruggs, what would you think of the, all the... Uh, there's some cool action. There's some cool tension. It looks like a thriller. Well, I was pleased as punch. <laughs> oh, you are. Right <laughs> <laughs> to see that they fucking tried to do something serious for fucking Christ's uh, sake. You know what? I agree. And a lot of people... I was like, say, oh, there's no jokes yeah, in the air. Yeah. There's no fucking wacky bullshit going on. There's no like dumb one liners. It's like, oh, yeah, it does make it seem a little serious, but I'm I'm down for that. It's supposed to be serious. It's a fucking invasion. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Yeah. Let's fucking see. The only thing is that I feel like it's going to be held back because it's a TV show and uh, you're not going to be able to get all the like all the guest spots that you want. I don't know. Maybe you can. Maybe I don't you can. know. Who knows? Because uh, yeah. that's what it is. It's like if these scrolls are not only in government, but they've actually taken over all the powered people. Yeah, all the heroes were scrolls. Everybody was a scroll. Yeah. Well, the thing, also the weird, the different thing though is you don't exactly know where it's going because they made the decision in Captain Marvel to make the scrolls at least a sect of the scrolls the good guys, Friendly. which I don't think yeah. I've seen very much in the yeah. comics. Yeah. So yeah, so maybe there's bad scrolls. There's Kree. yeah. So I'm, w- I'm interested to see how this kind of plays out. Well, Ruggs, you're right. There's a there's some weight to this. There's some gravity, some heft. It feels serious. And look, it's fine. We had a couple of fun things, right? We had your Thor, Love and Thunder. We got She Hulk, Miss Marvel. Couple of light things. Lots of couple. fun. <laughs> okay, there's a bunch of them in a row. 
but it would be yeah. nice to get back to something that kind of feels like it has consequences. With the exception of Falcon Winter, Winter Soldier, I mean, they've Moon all Knight, been uh, wacky. Yeah, yeah, Moon Knight was wacky, and it was also kind of, yeah, that's yeah. the same way. So that's fantastic. So I'm excited. The cast looks great. We're not going to get this until 2023. So there's a lot of waiting. So I said Don Cheadle is in that. You see him in the trailer. He will be, they said, he'll be returning as the lead in Armor Wars. The Secret Invasion will lead into Armor Wars. And that's yeah, f- people were freaking out that Armor Wars wasn't mentioned at uh, Comic-Con. So there you go. Yeah, there was a new trailer. They mentioned it. They put a, I mean, there was a logo. I don't know. If, I don't think they showed any footage. No, it's no happening. Footage. Yeah. Filming. Ex- filmed, yeah. Expect lots of crazy different suits in this one. Let's move on to then Kevin Feige moves on to Captain America, New World Order, uh, and the whole cast is also there. And Feige in this starts out by saying there are no more Avengers, but there's still a Captain America. Well, what about the the end of Endgame? They had they were making a new Avengers and they were they were are they recruiting new Avengers? Is there supposed to be Avengers still? No, that was Age Ultron. Yeah, they were still trying to do stuff. At the end of they? Endgame, it was all done, I thought. You know, it was, yeah, I think you're thinking about Age Ultron Rugs, where they have the new team. Oh. And well, uh, at the end to... of Endgame, they end it with, like, Cap, obviously, dancing with Peggy and this funeral. Oh. Okay. And, like, they, you had Sokovia Accords and the whole shit, everything blew up. So there was, like, nothing. There's no more. So apparently there's no more Avengers. Anyways, coming to this one, returning from the show, Captain uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Carl Umley as Isaiah Bradley. It's great to see these guys in a movie. Danny Ramirez will be the new Falcon, probably, uh, as Joaquin Torres. And here's the big one. Tim Blake Nelson from the fucking Ed Norton Hulk movie returning as Dr. Samuel Stearns, the leader. Oh, shit. Still alive, still you around. You better have a fucking pencil mustache. And a giant <laughs> head. Does he need to have a big head and a pencil mustache? Yeah, he does. Come on. Uh, comments on this casting news, Anthony. Uh, I was I was happy to see that because I I although I don't think the Incredible Hulk is a great movie I like that they're tr- reincorporating that movie because it always has felt distant from everything else because yeah. of the big obviously the big casting change I like the leader I, I was always when they when they tease the leader in that movie I, I wanted to see the leader so to co- see him come back eventually is great he definitely has to have the gigantic dome with the pencil mustache yeah, because what but, happened the last time we saw him the very last time. Yeah, he has a cut on his head, and then some Hulk blood drips into his and head. And it starts bubbling and expanding. Right. Yeah, go. And you're like, oh shit, it's the leader. Leader, the leader for a Cap villain is kind of strange, but maybe that maybe that's a thing in the comics. So, I don't know. Or is the Hulk going to be in this? Is there going to be more Hulk stuff? Does this lead into the Hulk movie? That could be interesting. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, they are incorporating a lot of that 2008 Hulk movie. We're seeing it in the She Hulk and other places. It's crazy. Uh, It'd be good to see the leader, you know. Yeah, he's a good he's, he's a good villain. He's a good character. He's like a gamma powered dude. Yeah. We need more of those. Throw the leader a bone. Also It's like Hulk has his own rogues gallery. Right. Let's let's use some of it. Yeah. He's definitely one of the big ones up there. So you want to see little man with a big green head go up against the giant green man. <laughs> That's what we were promised. Um uh other casting news, Israeli actress Shira Haas is going to be playing the Israeli Jewish superhero Sabra in this movie. I'm not familiar with Sabra. Apparently, she's from the comics. Uh, but she's a Sabra hero. She's a Sabra hero. She makes great hummus. <laughs> is that a superpower? <laughs> oh, shit. Sabra hummus is delicious. Uh, yes. So that's it. She for- made her first appearance in Incredible Hulk 250 in August of 1980. Oh, 1980. Oh, so that she goes back a while. Yeah. Well, yeah, those that, that old school one. She wore like the Star of David on her shirt. She did, yeah. I saw some of the the shots of this. Uh, so, yeah, they're pulling some obscure characters left and right to put in these movies. It's great. Get them all. Get all the characters <laughs> nobody's heard of. Uh, then they talked about Loki season two. The cast was there. There was a teaser shown just to the people there. Um, everyone's returning. Owen Wilson, Sophie DiMartino, Sylvie, and of course Tom Hiddleston, and joining them. Is K Hui Kwan, who we recently you might have seen him in Everything Everywhere All at Once, but it's fucking Data from the Goonies and Short Round from Indiana Jones joining Loki season two as a TVA employee. I love, cool. I love this. I love that. He'll guy. be he'll be great in that. 
<laughs> dude, that dude took quit acting for like 38 years after playing. Yeah, Dana. but he came back with a vengeance. And he, he was just like strong. He dusted himself off and it was like, yeah. let's fucking do yeah. this shit. You know what's funny about that casting is when when I saw he was announced, my friends went, he was awesome in everything everywhere yeah, yeah. all at once. They didn't even think about that he was the kid and all those other I, things. Did people forget that he's fucking Data in Short Round? It's fucking Data I mean, I don't in think Short people for, completely forgot, but I think I didn't see that movie, but apparently he did really well. He, that movie's great. It's got fucking Fanny, Fanny Peck Kung Fu. Yeah. He beats him up with it. But how can you forget? <laughs> That's what I said. Booty traps. How can you forget that? Fucking goodies. What is but he, he was saying? right. They are booty traps. They are booty traps. <laughs> they're not booby traps. They're they're it's traps for, for your, the booty. It should be called booty traps. The is that what he says in Indiana booty. Jones? No, that's in goodies. Oh. Booty traps. In Indiana, what, does he always, what does he say in Indiana Jones all the time? Dr. Jones! Yeah, he's yeah. screaming Dr. that. Dr. And then, Dr. Jones! Yeah. And he's like, he know crazy. He know nuts, lady. He crazy. <laughs> and I remember he cuts down the, the bridge and he's like, oh, hang on, lady. We go for a ride. <laughs> and then he cuts the bridge and they fall. <laughs> So many great lines. Dr. Jones. Show round. <laughs> he has the fucking brick tied to his foot so he can drive the car and the getaway. Oh, man. He's great. Show round's amazing. <laughs> Anyways, he's joining. He's very country. resourceful, he's young man. Very resourceful. I couldn't be happier. Also, another great thing was they they did an Indiana Jones Lucasfilm presentation for the M5, and he got all mm-hmm. emotional. But Harrison Ford, K. Hui Kwan reunited after like 38 years. Uh, wow. Together, there was a picture of them backstage. I was like, "Oh shit, short road found Indy again." I know <laughs> that that movie didn't make our tournament, but let's just never forget the fact that Roadhouse beat Indiana Jones. It did, didn't it? It beat Raiders, didn't it? <laughs> it was too. It was slumming it in our tournament. It, it absolutely didn't need to be was. There. It was. Yeah, we throw. Yeah, it was unfair. I don't have any so. argument against. It. I just want. I just like <laughs> bringing that back up. Well, yeah. Never forget. It's, look, if you you put like a a fucking. Heavyweight world class boxer in with fucking like people who are doing (laughs) who are doing fucking the like uh, MMA. It's just it's it's not gonna work. (laughs) Uh, Doctor Jones. Yeah, no, and he was in the second one anyway, so he wasn't. He was yeah, that one wasn't in the tournament. Uh, and then uh, they did Iron Man three Quantum Mania cast was there footage was show and stuff about well Kang. the footage actually you didn't write it down no. but what was it the reason that it seems like Kang is involved with Ant Man oh, in this yes. movie is they showed footage of the meeting and Kang saying you know have I killed you yet yeah. no you know I've killed a lot of Avengers and he's he's the reason he's roping in Ant Man is because he needs him to do a heist for him in the quantum realm. Yeah, something was stolen from him. Something was stolen from Kang, and he needs yes. Ant-Man to That's go great. He needs Scott Lang's help to just pull a heist. Even Kang can't do. You got to get ant There must be something in the quantum realm then right. that it's hidden. So that's exciting. I'm excited for that. I'm excited for Ant-Man 3. I can't wait to see Kang, more Kang. I mean, Loki season two, there's like Kang statues, they said. Yep. So he's going to be in there. So, uh, yeah, I didn't ask you if you guys were excited for any of these things. But whatever. No, just I'm keep going. I'm excited for all of them. Uh, moving on to Echo, Kevin Feige introduces the cast, uh, Alakwa Cox, and uh, the rest of the cast, and then Vincent D'Onofrio shows up as Kingpin, confirming he is the villain. Uh, they showed footage where Kingpin's eye was bandaged because she shot him at the end fucking, uh, uh, of that show. Was that Hawkeye? What show was that? Hawkeye, yeah. It was Hawkeye, yes. So he's the main bad guy. Then they all leave. He stays on and introduces Charlie Cox to talk about Daredevil. Born again, uh, and recently Charlie Cox has confirmed that this is not season four. This is a reboot. This is season one, yep. even though they're the same people. Yeah, so it's we now have gotten confirmation. We kind of knew that with the way they they had handled the Kingpin in Hawkeye. He's way more powered than he's he is a lot on the show. Bigger too, like physically, like you see yeah. how exaggerated big they make him in that. It's great. Exactly. So yeah, it's, now we know same actors, but a respin, a reboot. I call yeah, reboot, respin, reimagining. It's I mean that's great, and I love that these guys are there. But like, do we want? What about the rest of the cast? Like your Karen Page and your Foggy, and then you have Rosaria Dawson, who is in all the shows. Should they get a shot back or just recast them? There's a ton of rumors that, well, I saw a rumor that Bullseye might come back. I don't oh. know. And then I saw a ton of rumors, take these with a grain of salt, that Luke Cage will be back, Jessica oh, Jones okay. will be back, yeah. like, and the Punisher. Those I mean, none of those people are doing anything. I mean, I think the guy from Luke Cage was doing a sh- series called Evil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know if, uh, what's her name from, from Jessica Jones is doing shit. 
I thought she got a TV show or maybe a pilot. I don't know if it got picked up. Uh, but I can see. I mean, you got to bring Bernthal back. And I can, if they're doing this, I can see them bringing a lot more of the other leads. Yeah, Bernthal's podcasting and being like a gigolo. Or <laughs> Kristen <laughs> Ritter was Jessica. Yeah. Yes, Kristen Ritter. I think she's working on something else. But hell, they can bring Mike them all Coulter, back. Mike Coulter, Luke Cage. Yeah, Mike Coulter. Well, it's up. Uh, don't bring back Finn, Finn Jones. No, fuck that guy. Everybody else. I'm the, you don't uh, need him anymore. We got Sean. Yeah, we got Sean Chi. I am the immortal Iron Fist. Uh, are you guys more excited for Echo or Daredevil? I think that's the easy answer. Oh, man. Jesus Christ. Come on. But if Daredevil. Who, who, no, I don't think. They're, can't, they're, I mean, I, I get why they're doing Echo. Yeah. I, I, we all. They're checking get off it. a box. Yes. So like but no, no one. I, I can't say anyone that I've talked to is excited to see an Echo show. No, I'm hoping that show can sell me more on the character. Like. She was great and all, but I feel like we didn't get to enough. I'd like to see what she could do. So, and if Kingpin's in it, maybe Daredevil's in it. But Daredevil, born again, eighteen episodes, absolutely. Uh, will they be pulling? How much from the Frank Miller run will they be pulling? Even though they kind of did it, it, I hope it's good. I hope they're able to to live up that Daredevil show. Those three seasons, especially season one and three, I, were very very good television. Absolutely. And uh, how much will they repeat what the, what was already done on Netflix versus, you know, pull from Frank Miller? It's going to be interesting to see the changes. OK, then this is kind of out of order, but I saved the big reveal for last. The cast of the Marvels is there. Uh, Brie Larson and Monvalani and Monica, the girl who plays Monica Rambeau. I forget. Tiana her name. Paris. Tiana Paris. They showed footage there. And apparently the three of them are all swapping places with each other. So at the end of Miss Marvel, where Brie Larson shows up where Kamala Khan is, Kamala goes where Monica is, and Monica swaps with where Brie Larson was. All their powers have kind of been entangled and mixed up. Yep. I, you know what? We, the first movie was okay. You know, Brie Larson's good. I don't blame her. I blame maybe the writing and the directing. But I like that this is kind of a little team of Miss Marvels. Like, I love Iman Vellani, and I can't wait to see her interact with these two. <laughs> This movie's gonna go down in flames. You think so? Why is yes. that rocks? Oh, because I, you know, I go on the YouTube's and I look at Twitter people and are trashing it already. There's well, people a, do the, not like Brie Larson. There's a, well, not what is that? But like people don't like Captain Marvel. Yeah. Oh, in uh, general. Yeah. So well, I, th- uh, I think I think I think those two go hand in hand. I don't think it, I don't think people like Brie Larson as Captain. It's Marvel. one of those things where um, when the movie came out, everybody was saying how good it was, but then. More people have come around to be like, yeah, it wasn't that great. The, the, like the, yeah. the, the, the haze of it being a moment. It made a billion off. dollars in the moment. Yeah. I think if you released it today, it wouldn't make shit. No, I think you're right. I think that's the reason why they're doing this ensemble cast, because anytime you look on the Internet, people are just pouncing. on <laughs> But Miss Marvel, like, Miss Marvel, even though Imran thinks it's the second coming of uh, whatever, but she's great. Uh, it's a great it, show. Like it, it did. That didn't really go over well either. Yeah. It didn't get uh, a ton of views. No, no. So, and then you got the other Monica Rambeau who was in, who they kind of already kind of showed in WandaVision. The, no, in the, in the new um, Dr. Strange oh, movie. Right. Right, or that was and her mom. Really, nobody it? was really clamoring about that mm-hmm. either. That wasn't really didn't really make a big headline news or whatever. Nobody was really like talking about that. So none of those things, unless this trailer is so amazing, yeah, I feel like this is gonna. It's probably going to get the probably the lowest box office of any Marvel movie. Yeah, wow. I hope I'm wrong, but I think that's just what I'm predicting. So. Well, there is an interview out where yeah, I saw. I was again, just looking at that where uh, they asked Brie Larson if she wants to be how long she wants to be Captain Marvel and she kind of gives a she's like yeah she I'm, gives a does like a, I don't know if she's trying to be funny or she's just really socially awkward and again it's just a 11 second clip so I'm trying to read into her personality based on 11 seconds but she she comes off not very well in that she's, she's like she's like does anyone want me to be Miss Marvel yeah, does, she goes like, on, seriously yeah. does anyone care does yeah. anyone want me to? she's like I, I don't think know. she's trying to address the fact that there's a million hate videos on her but uh yeah, I didn't like her at all in, in the first movie. Yeah, so I yeah. thought she was, I, unlike you, I don't think she was great at all. I think she was terrible. I think the movie is not <laughs> great. I think it's my, I think that movie is my least favorite Marvel movie, that least favorite project they've ever done. Yeah. Yeah. I think this, this movie obviously has, is behind the eight ball. And it's smart that they did an ensemble cast because yeah. her on her own, I, I think. But that's the, what the thing is. I was hoping that the ensemble was going to pick it up. Mm-hmm. And so far, I don't really feel like anything's really 
uh, gaining enough steam to help it. Yeah, we'll see. No, I, I mean, I hate to be a pessimist, but I mean, I'm just being realistic about this. Yeah. So I mean, I'm only, I guess I'm literally just watching this movie to see Miss Marvel and what she does. Right? Well, I'm at definitely going to see it. You know, I'll be there the opening yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, but everything you guys said is uh, I agree with. <laughs> I mean, if you look up yeah. the amount of our boy Matt does, what's his name? Adam does movies. He yes. even made a video about uh, the hate of Chris, Chris, Captain Marvel. Jeez. Brie Larson. Jeez. I mean, people, people really don't like her. <laughs> well, I don't think he was, his video was about how much he he just no, was just he, like he, he was commenting on it. Yeah, he was just like observing what's going on. Where she is even commenting about. She knows that people don't like her in the role. So, see, I think she's okay in the role, handled with better uh, director and script. Like she'd be fine. So, but what is her? What was likable about that character? I don't know. She's a tough girl. I think that it, they, they they made a big error in that movie, and it's hard to. It's kind of like, but I do think that it's kind of a double standard because we've seen Henry Cavill get a raw deal. Yeah. But because he's such a fanboy and because he really does love Superman and kind of respects fans that like people want to give him a shot, even though his portrayal wasn't the greatest character uh, version of Superman. The thing what Brie Larson did is she started telling people that this movie's not for 40 year old losers who live in their mom's basement. Yeah. Right. And, and they they're like, OK, sharpening their axes down there. Like, yeah, uh, so. She didn't have a very good uh, PR run after this movie. With none of that, with I think she berates the Academy. There's yeah, one, yeah, you know, there's yeah. the infamous interview where she's next to Chris Hemsworth and she's just snapping at him the entire time, you know, saying, "I'm the first Brie Larson. I'm the yeah. I'm the pow- most play." You know, it's just again, I don't know if she's trying to be funny yeah. or, and she just has a real. She's just not very good at interviews, but uh, I, she doesn't come off very well. See what happens is. I think that I don't think a lot of that stuff, a lot of stuff is probably innocuous, but because it's colored with that stain of whatever happened a couple times. Yeah. Like everything's looked through that, through that lens. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you just kind of do one thing and you fuck up enough where you got people with ammo on you. Then that's it. it, Like you're done. Each thing builds. It sticks on you. And Marvel also kind of screwed her with. They made Captain Marvel so overpowered that it's just it's a tough character, similar to Superman. It's a tough character to rally behind when all she has to do is just punch her way out of something and, and nothing can stop her. Like that's a hard character to really feel anything for. Yeah, to make relatable. And they went the whole route where she was kind of playing this character that didn't know her past, yet was really like overconfident and she was doing a weird Tony Stark impersonation, but not as charismatic, more just kind of an asshole. It was just a weird characterization. I, yeah. Everything about that movie was strange. <laughs> I I really, I, I'm, I mean, like, look, you could take that same movie and flip it to a male character and it won't, wouldn't get as much scrutiny. No, but I not. also think I guess there is a punch. It does. There's guy characters that could just do shit and whatever, but they, um, they never really like did the I had the power all along stuff, which which is kind of weird of a weird story uh point. But um I think it was her her reaction to this her her press conferences mm-hmm. and her public speaking that really f- fucked up. I think as I said, the movie is bad. She's unlikable in that movie, but who knows? Yeah, you know, she made comments about people telling her to smile, and you know, you know that beam that became a meme. <laughs> like, if you do say something that, even though it's true that it's memeable, it's going to become a meme. And that's it. Like, you know, and they could just paint it however they want. So I'm sure that it's unfortunate, but I'm sure like Marvel PR is just having a field day trying to, you know, with her. But still. Not as bad as Ezra Miller and Warner Brothers. No, no, so, yeah, no. <laughs> no. So they got that. Well, yeah, but isn't that like a double standard? Like yeah. Ezra Miller is literally fucking fucking and people up. And they still haven't done shit. And they're like, oh, we're still going to put the movie out. <laughs> you can smash whatever, whoever you want in the face. It's fine. Right. Uh, so that's the Marvels. Now I save kind of, I think, the biggest reveal for the last of the Marvel presentation. The rumor leading up to this all the last few weeks was we were going to get a, the cast of a new movie revealed. 
and it was very exciting. And that did happen, but not for the movie that everyone was expecting. We thought the rumors were you were going to get your Fantastic Four casting, right? They talked about Fantastic Four for like 10 seconds, just confirming Matt Shackman is directing. And that was it. Nothing else. No cast. Moving on. The cast reveal they did do is for the Thunderbolts movie. And this is interesting because it's nobody new, of course. And then it's kind of the lineup everybody was expecting. Here's who is in the Thunderbolts. David Harbour returning from Black Widow as Red Guardian. You got Hannah John Kamen as Ghost from the Ant-Man movies. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, of course, as Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. Uh, Wyatt Russell as U.S. agent from Falcon and Winter Soldier. Florence Pugh coming back to be Yelena Belova. And fucking Sebastian Stan as Bucky Barnes Winter Soldier. Oh, shit. In this team. Interesting group of characters. Uh, interesting. There's no Abomination or Zemo, but maybe they'll factor in later. Anthony, reaction to this lineup of the Thunderbolts? Uh, a little bit disappointing. Here's why. Okay. First off, the people you mentioned are not in it. Abomination. Yeah. Baron Zemo. Yeah. But similar to when they did the Defenders, you've just got too many characters that overlap in powers. They do the same thing. Yes. A lot of them have the same powers. What makes the Avengers fun and when you have Justice League is you have all these guys that have different powers that bounce off one another. Yeah. But in this, you have... Four Captain Americas. Yes, yeah, a you lot have, of super so soldiers. Three, theory. maybe four yeah. Captain Americas, if you yeah. count Taskmaster. Yeah. And in Yelena Belova and Taskmaster are also kind of similar. So you have four guy four people yeah. that are have punchy powers. Yep. It's like Ghost four, is the only one that's yep. that's actually unique. Different, but yeah. She's probably one of the more boring characters we've gotten in the Marvel universe. So yeah. it's kind of tough. Yeah. And Taskmaster was kind of weird in that movie. Oh, too. Taskmaster was awful. So they can awful. do a, a lot of good with that character. So hopefully they can redeem it. Just, it, it, it makes it tough when you have, you, it, there's too many guys that have the same yeah. power. You have, you have fake Captain America. Yeah. You have Captain America. Sidekick. Winter soldier, yeah. the winter soldier, who is basically the opposite side of the coin of Captain America. Yeah. Then you have the Russian, Russian Captain, Captain America. America. Yeah. Right. And, then you have the Taskmaster, which is modeled after Captain yeah. America. Yeah, who could be And anybody. then you got a, basically a girl ninja, which is basically like Captain America. <laughs> so <And> the- <laughs> you got five Captain Americas and a girl who could disappear. And then Contessa can't, <laughs> Valentina Allegra, she doesn't really do anything. So no, she just has a really she's, long name. Yeah, she's got a long yeah, name. That's her remember. power. It's t- It's one of those things where, I mean, the movie might be fine. It might be yeah. great. Who knows? But what? If we were getting the Thunderbolts, which is Marvel's equivalent of the Suicide Squad, right. villains, you can really have a lot of fun with different villains, and it, it, these choices are just not you, not fun. You got one that can't talk. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, and it's just girl, yeah, it, it is a shame. Uh, William Hart uh, passed away because you don't get right. You would have had. You probably would have had Red Hulk. Red Hulk, th- the General Thunderbolt Ross. Red Hulk, like leading the group. Would have been crazy. But yeah, the original Thunderbolts in the comics, it's like villains pretending to be heroes so that the public can kind of see. There's them as all heroes. sorts of things they yeah. did. Dark yeah, Avengers. Yeah. Kind Dark of thing. Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just not a. It's a, it's a, it's a weird lineup. It's an interesting. It's lineup. very not sexy lineup. at all. Yeah. No. I mean, I do like Florence Pugh. I would I would have sex with her. So she is she's, sexy. Like, she's great. I want to see more U.S. agent. I thought that character was really interesting by the end of Winter Soldier. David Harbour is just a joy to watch because he's just fun. And then the others are the others. I don't really know about uh, it's all the same people playing. I hope I like it. I mean, I just feel like, yeah, underwhelmed by this, Mm -hmm. this uh, cast. I mean, this grouping of heroes or whatever. Yeah. But um, who knows? It could be. I didn't even mention Taskmaster who plays her. It's the same girl. But they were all there. Yes. And she's in a mask. Yeah. You never see her. It takes a mask. And I think she was mute. They take this gorgeous girl. You thought it was a dude the whole time. And then, yeah, you put her in armor so you can't tell. Yeah. And then you cover her face. Great job. Yes. So, I mean, I think that was <laughs> I think that was the biggest reveal. So, overall, guys, looking back, these announcements, uh, did it do anything for you? Was it disappointing? Did it satisfy Floppy Jock? Floppy uh, Jock. Geek Boner. Geek Boner. What would you rate with this Marvel D23? Uh, um, start with Rugs. I, look, it it did what it had to do, which was like, let me know what was happening with Marvel, that things were happening. 
So in that way, it succeeded. Is there anything that I'm really looking forward to that I'm like going, like anticipating other than like Wakanda forever and seeing Namor and seeing how this all pans out? How would he succeed in handing off the, the mantle? That's basically the main thing. Everything else is like, all right, whatever. Secret Secret Invasion is okay. Uh, it's a TV show. It's hard to get really super stoked about that. It's just, um, I don't know. <laughs> I have a I, I have a really long answer about Marvel. Period. Yeah. But like, I don't want to get into it right now. <laughs> Anthony, were you satiated? I mean, it was ultimately disappointing based on hype. Yeah, you know, we as mentioned earlier. There was a bunch of big names that we were rumored to get rolled out there, so it's kind of our own fault, right? We we had I read the internet, the internet fooled me. I I came into this thinking the internet was going to be right. They were wrong, and Marvel can only announce unless they're holding back stuff, which I don't know why they would. They can only announce what they can announce, and if this is all they have, this is all they have. So ultimately, floppy jack. Oh, but that's more because of job. the fact yeah. that I just bought into what was going to happen. I read, I read. It's similar to WandaVision. You, yeah, you, you come up with an ending for how this is supposed to play out, and that's not what they had planned. So you know, whatever. Yeah. Ultimately, the internet disappoints again, as it does all the time. But you know, I love you know the crowd there got a, a, a good treat, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of that stuff slowly. In trailers. Yeah, I'm sure if I would have been there live, I would have enjoyed seeing yeah, so exclusive footage. So, sounds like a lot of exciting footage. Uh, but, but like, what's like, what's new? Nothing. That's the thing. Is like, Phase Six still has like, these we empty have all slots. these characters we've seen before. Yes. There's nothing new. There's no like new thing that we're gonna be like, oh shit! Like, can't that's wait to see point. what that's, that's like. That's a good point. These are all well. Like, where Nick Fury, Knight we is know. Movie. Maria Hill, we know. All these characters in this other movie, we know. Yeah. The Halloween, so we know it all. The Halloween thing is the only thing that has the. That's new the character. only thing yeah. that's remotely and new. That's just and like one movie. Uh, yeah. Been, yeah, it stood out, and it was the only thing that really yeah. stood out. So yeah. there you go. I got an interesting report from comicbookmovie.com from Deadline's Justin Kroll about regarding Fantastic Four and X Men. Justin Kroll said, "Quote: Fiji for the most part does not want to make big casting decisions without getting input from his director." This is regarding Fantastic Four, and there was heavy rumors that Jodie Comer had been picked to play Sue Storm, and I bet she has. I bet they do have a lot of the casting mostly locked down, but they got to run it by Matt Shackman, maybe had some different ideas, and they're just waiting, right? But so... Yeah, you should have the director have some say in that. Yeah, I like that. I like that he wants the director involved, and then Kroll also says regarding X-Men that, quote, it isn't happening for a very long time. Uh, Don't hold your breath for any casting decisions. So that... Because there was another rumor that all the X-Men characters couldn't play those characters until like 2025 or something according Hmm. to contractual reasons Hmm. or something that's what i thought i heard so i don't think we're gonna get i think we're gonna get x-men teases a lot but i don't think we're gonna get any official anything for a while on that one Uh, i mean marvel and all those secret wars having the x-men in there would be kind of important but yeah you could also see the x-men being in just a different on an entirely different phase i uh, yeah i'm thinking phase seven just wait till phase seven you'll phase see seven yes oh, that's yeah, when the yeah. x-men will come not even phase six but it's a shame yeah right right they don't maybe they get they come in the end of secret wars because you really be great to have them in secret wars uh okay a couple of star wars things also released there was a new trailer for andor that is starting soon in a few weeks uh, it will have a three-episode premiere September 21st. Did you guys uh, get a look at this? This I'm kind of slowly, low-key, getting more more excited for this show because it looks... I didn't watch the trailer. Oh, you didn't watch it? All right. It's more, you know, espionage. And uh, apparently every three episodes, it jumps ahead in time show in this first season. Oh, really? Anthony, did you watch this trailer? I know you don't care. I'll give a fuck about Star I did. Wars. I did. So, But, yeah, I don't really give a fuck. So, although... Again, I'll say that uh, Rogue One is my favorite of these Star Wars movies, so it has that kind of tone. This I don't really know them? what's going on. Can yeah. I can I ask you, Imran? Yeah. Do you think this is going to be like a lore dump? Um, I don't know. There seems to be a lot of action. There seems to be, uh, you know, they mentioned the director of Born Born Supremacy. 
a lore dump meaning all exposition? It seems huge. Well, you're saying scale. that it's it's jumping time. Oh yes, yes. So maybe we'll get a lot of like lore. Well, they're trying to bridge the gap, the five year gap between because it starts five years between Star Wars before New Hope, and the first season's going to take place over a year, and I think the second season jumps through the next four years. So I think it's just trying to show you how the rebellion is growing and move it along at a good pace. This is also yeah. when Rebels takes place, which is interesting. And I have some news about something about that later. But I don't know. The action looks good. It looks fucking it looks dope. I mean, it might be as good as the Mandalorian, possibly. All right. The vibes I'm getting. Speaking of which, they put out a quick teaser for Mandalorian season three that this is not coming until next year. Anthony, you're in the Mando. Did you see this? What'd you think of this one? Yeah, it looks good. Uh, if you're, as mentioned when we were talking about Boba Fett, if you're a fan of Mandalorian and didn't watch Boba Fett, you got to be super confused yeah. that Rogu is with Mando. But in, other than that, you got uh, Katie Sackhoff. Yep, Bo Katan. It looks like they're doing a whole, well, because you took off the mask, you're not a real Mandalorian. It's and then out. she's talking to him about, you know, what you believed in was all stupid and shit like that. So I don't know. Cool. Cool I, like, we're the real fucking Mandos, yeah. and those people are in a cult. Yeah, you, you gotta. De- I gotta default to you guys on the on this. I like Mandalorian, but I just once I see one Star Wars thing, it all kind <laughs> of blends together for me. Maybe maybe this is how fans of Marvel feel when they see a trailer; they think it all blends together. But that's how I feel whenever I see Star Wars. I go, yeah, that looks exactly like the other Star Wars. <laughs> thing I just don't nope. care about. So I don't know. I'm. I kind of. I, I'm. I'm. Well, on one hand, I like lore, right? I like when they they put the lore in there, and, and it, it and it makes and it create like finally you understand what a Mandalorian is, you understand the struggle, you understand what transpired, and you kind of get that whole like that would be cool, like to have this show actually not only be a cool adventure, but to kind of also do those things as well. That's exciting to me, but yeah, I do want to see like some new shit. I want to see some new adventures. I want to see new characters. I want to kind of the universe to expand as well. But um, it's good to kind of have a solid. It's one of those things like Marvel built this big universe, and Star Wars is trying to do the same thing, and it has in a lot of ways. Yeah, and it's a lot. Like I mean, if you want to get caught up on all the lore, you have to watch all the cartoons, yeah. and that's like an. For a lot of people, that's where the most lore is. Yeah, the cartoons is like where they spill everything. I don't know why they do it that way. That's true. That's very interesting. It's just—is it easier? It's just you can. I don't know. I think they have. Well, they have a s- episodic serial like. Lo- you know, I think they ordered like yeah. thirteen or more episodes a year. Something like yeah. twenty episodes. Yeah, they have a lot of episodes. So you can pepper in a lot of shit. Yeah. It, in that timeline, and then you get you kind of have a better understanding of everything, like. You learn about the kyber crystals and all that stuff about Jedi's from watching those cartoons. So, um, but the thing is, a lot of people won't watch those things, right? They just so it's kind of weird. So they might have to use Mando to do like they already went over all this shit in Clone Wars, right? Yeah, the the Mandalorian shit. But the average person's not going to watch that, so you're going to have to redo it here. They're going to have to explain it again. I like though in this trailer, there's a lot of different locations, so it looks like they're moving around. And rugs, did you notice there's some famous puppets popping up in this trailer? Yaddle. In the, there's oh Yaddle's in there? Yeah, I saw Yaddle. There's a female Yoda in the tree. There's a bunch of salacious crumbs. Remember salacious crumb, Jabba's right hand. Yeah, little, I saw those. Right? And then Babu Frick before from uh Rise of Skywalker and Last Jedi. You know, you got all these puppets they didn't ask me. Yeah, they, they, nobody called rugs, <laughs> and you got Grogu. There's so many puppets in this show and they didn't get If rugs you saw call. me in Star Wars, what would happen? Oh my god, I could see you in the background <laughs> as one of the Jawas or something. <laughs> Put rugs in there. Rug, yeah, I'll yeah. do it. I'm excited for Mando season. Give three. me a call. Uh Come on, Favreau. along those lines, uh the Ahsoka show has a new cast member, Rugs. They found someone to play Ezra Bridger. It's another actor named Iman, not Iman Vellani. Oh, it's oh. Iman Esfandi. Whoa, will be joining the Ahsoka show as Ezra Bridger. And is he Pakistani as well? Uh, you know, no. I don't know. I did look not look up. up. Let's see. It doesn't sound. It, doesn't no, it sound, sounds uh, more like uh, Persian. Uh, Iman Esfandi. Yeah, Iman Esfandi. 
Uh, Rug, so that means Ahsoka is going to be looking for Thrawn and Ezra somewhere. They're going to be. Are you excited that there's an Ezra Bridger? I'm excited that there's going to be Thrawn in Ahsoka show. I think, yeah, bring them to life. You did it with with Ahsoka, and that that went over well. Let's keep doing it. Let's do it. I got nothing on this guy. You find everything? Well, I'm looking. I can't really find anything. Uh, he, he looks was, a little Persian. He was he was in King Richard most recently. He was born in Laredo, Texas. Oh, he's uh, from Texas. Ah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I don't know where he's what his family is from. Uh, but no, he looks like out. a grown up uh, as a preacher. Like it's a good casting. If the guy can act great. Yeah, I think it's pretty on yeah, target yeah. there. Yeah, Ezra Bridger coming to live action. Uh, okay, one more thing before we wrap up, but I want to tell you, listener, check out our T Public shop to get some Jock and Nerd swag. Visit jockandnerd.com slash shop. Jock and Nerd. You can buy t shirts, hoodies, uh, tank tops, mugs, cell phone cases, lots of stuff with different logos. Our new logo, our old logo, Rug Boy Space. Lots of great sales throughout the month. There is a link in the description. Buy some shit. Wear it around. It's fun to do. All the kids are doing it. Uh, not to be left out over on Warner Brothers DC uh, area before all this happened. Uh, they quietly released a new Black Adam trailer that uh, people were talking they about did. for a hot second. Yes. And you know yeah. what? There's a lot of fucking action in here. I'm kind of like, pretty good. I yes, I needed this trailer to get me excited. Some good reveals. Anthony, what'd you like in this trailer? Uh, there, yeah, it's just a ton of action. You get to see more of the Justice Society of America. You kind of also see there's the villain in this. I I, I, I looked on Wikipedia and I, I forgot what the, the villain's name is, but it looks like Black Adam's trying to get revenge. The Justice Society is trying to stop him because he's calling all this damage. Ah. Um, and they might team up probably at the end, but, uh, you know, he's like an antihero. So, yeah, the, the trailer was really good. I liked it a lot. You see Amanda Waller in there running the team. So Dr. Fate's kind of the leader and you got Hawkman. Sabak and- is the villain. Oh, Sabak is be the bad guy. So they probably don't understand what he's doing and they try to stop him and he's got to explain. Look, I'm trying to save everybody. Right. Uh, I thought Hawkman looked fucking sick in this trailer. The way his mace turns from like a mace to an X. The suit, the way the mask comes down, that shit looks fire. Rugs, what do you think? Are you more more geeky? I'm watching this? the trailer right now as you guys are talking. I, forget, I didn't realize there was a yeah, second trailer. Yeah, the of Adam Smasher being all big, walking down the street, that shit. The only more thing Dr. is... More Dr. Fate. Yeah, more Dr. Fate and multiple Dr. Fates for holding him back. Uh, the only thing is everything is like Sandy Brown. That's my only main criticism. Maybe well, you could add some, the desert. It is. It is. It's like there's not a lot of color, which is... Going back to the old DC movies, there's a little bit of green smoke. I just saw. It's got a little Snyder-esque quality. Right, to a it. little bit, but uh, they are largely in the desert, and he, he looks fucking epic in the suit, and when shit's blowing up behind him, The Rock looks badass, I gotta say. Yeah, I liked it. I like yeah, the trailer. That's coming out October, the only DC I wonder movie. how many people that are casual fans look at that trailer and go, man, Marvel really crushing these movies yes is this, is this oh, they have Superman? no idea yeah, yeah, lots right? of people oh man the rocks in marvel uh yeah no. they wouldn't yeah no how when did oh, the rocket into really. marvel? <laughs> he's related to who what's happening uh, here not really it's a giant guy it's a gold helmet looks dope okay let's take a break here we're gonna play some promos and we're gonna come back and we have another listener sponsored action movie to review right after this after these messages Have you ever been reading through a sack of comics and thought, maybe I should see what the Sarkham Asylum game is all about? Or been playing Marvel vs. Capcom and felt like you were at a real disadvantage since you didn't know who half the characters were? Well, Play Comics is the show for you. I'm Chris, and each episode we take a look at video games based on comic properties and how well they stick to that source material. So whether you know the comics and want to know how all these games work, or you know the games and want to find out where all this craziness came from, go check out Play Comics at playcomics.com or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. If you're looking for a sports host and show that gives you the flavor. Tom Brady is thrown for over 60,000 yards, the most playoff victories, the most Super Bowls, the most Super Bowl MVPs. He is not the greatest of all time. That brings the energy. Shaq, quote, the earth is flat, close quote. The earth is round. That isn't about 
this or that. It ain't this or that. Charles Barkley, 1994. You stole two home games in the Western Conference semifinals against the Rockets. Your team blows it in seven. One year later, up three games to one. Two games at home. And you blow that too. Then you've come to the right place. I am that man, your man, the illustrious tour guy, Cole Johnson. Cole Sports! On Cole Sports with a Z dot com. Doc and Nerd Listener, if you enjoy the show, you should support the show and join our awesome Jock and Nerd fan club. Visit jockandnerd.com slash patreon Jack and nerd. you can support the show on a monthly or annual basis everything goes back into the show we keep making the show we appreciate any and all support and you get stuff there's an exclusive podcast feed where the show comes out early bonus content is in there we are putting bonus content for our action movie tournaments 80s and 90s when we pick the movies lots of fun to listen to there's discord benefits we do a monthly hangout on discord just for our patreon subscribers This month is Thursday, September 22nd, 8 p.m. Write it down in your calendar. And there's a tier where called You Pick It, where you can pick any movie you want and force us to watch and review it. And we will happily and sometimes begrudgingly do it. Depends on the movie. So a lot of fun stuff over there. Jockinair.com slash Patreon. And speaking of the Patreon movies, that's what we were doing right now. This movie coming up is sponsored, uh, dedicated to listener and Patreon supporter Colby Long. Not Colby Short, Colby Long, Colby Long, who has been a patron for six months. So new patron, this is his first hey. pick. Thank you, Colby. Yeah. Uh, for signing up, your order is being fulfilled. We will be reviewing the 2012 movie Dread. Here are your spoilers. Strap yourselves in, you fucks. Spoiler time. Dread, not the 1995 Sylvester Stallone movie, Judge Dread, but the 2012 movie just titled Dread, which is based on a character from a 2000 AD comic strip uh, that is produced and put out in the UK. It is a UK character created by John Wagner and Carlos Esquerra. First appearance in 2000 AD number two, way back in March 1977. And I actually have some of these when I went to visit my cousins in Leeds, like way back in 1989. I was really into comics and they get, and there are these large, oversized newsprint, mostly black and white anthology. 2000 AD was an anthology comic book, so every character had a couple of pages. So every issue would have a couple page Judge Dread story that continued to the next page. And it cost 25 pence, is what it says on the cover. British money, but it's really pence? cool. Pence, twenty five p, like Mike Pence, like Mike Pence. It oh, actually it just it just says twenty five p, which is the coin. No, yeah. oh, oh yeah, gotcha. Uh, but these are from like nineteen eighty five, eighty six. I was looking at them the other day. The artwork's great. It's very cool to have these. This is where I know the character of Judge Dread. Uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, this Dread is sitting at seventy nine percent tomato meter. Not bad at all. Six point five out of ten. Uh, audience rating 72%. The movie was made for about 30 to $45 million and was not a box office hit. Makes up making only $41.5 million. Oh, sorry. Not good. Um, it did do well on video, though. It That's did. Like it does become like a cult hit later and on uh, DVD sales were good. Uh, this movie is directed by one Pete Travis who has done such movies as, what has he done? Not a lot of other movies that you would know. Uh, Okay. Yeah, so that's the Pete Travis. But Alex Garland is the producer. (laughs) Yes, the big news is written and produced by Alex Garland, who did what, Ruggs? What is the Alex Garland movies? Um, The one with the robot. Uh, What the fuck? Annihilation. Uh, Annihilation in the... um, Ex Machina, he wrote. Ex Machina, that's right. Yeah, wrote 28 Days Later. Uh, and definitely, you know, has a style uh, uh, in his movies. I do love the Alex Garland. So that was cool that he wrote this. Uh, it stars as your lead, Judge Dredd, Carl Urban. One Carl Urban. Uh, also stars Olivia Thurlby as the rookie Anderson. Lena Headey playing Mama, the big bad, and uh, some other people in here. Uh, but that's- Cersei. 
Oh, and so actually, Lena Headey, while she was playing Cersei on Game of Thrones, making this movie in 2011, 2012, right? Uh, Anthony, uh, first of all, had you seen this before? Did you, no. what do you, where did you learn about Dread? I knew that it came out. I had never seen it. Ooh. I've seen the original Judge Dread a long time ago with the, Stallone, so yeah. that's about it. That's my history with Dread. Okay, the 95 Dread. Rugs, what's your history with Dread, this character? Judge Dread or just this movie? Well, the character Judge Dread. Well, I, I obviously uh Simon Bisley did a Judge Dread oh, graphic yeah. novel oh, back in the day. Great stuff. Uh around the same time as the movies were were being kicked around, so I remember getting those and thinking that oh, he's pretty badass and he's the law, and, you know. Uh so I was into that. Then I saw the Stallone movie. Yeah. And uh, I actually didn't dislike the Stallone movie. I just thought it could have been so much better. Yeah. I feel like that they had a lot of the, a lot of stuff that was working. And then they just kind of like, you know, did some stupid Hollywood shit and then fucked it up. And then, yeah, you put Rob Schneider in there for some reason. I remember on Ain't It Cool News or something, yeah. um, they were reviewing Dread when it came out. And when Ain't It Cool News was still around. And, um, Everybody in the comment section was talking about how it was like basically like the raid, the movie The Raid, yes, where this movie twenty twelve goes, thread, yeah, yeah, it yeah. goes through like it's about a guy who has to go ascend through this building and fucking fight off all these guys. Instead, instead of it being a kung fu movie, it's like just bullets, you know, like RoboCop and shit. So uh, I watched it and I thought for a, what it was, what it cost to make. It packed a punch for and and not only that, but like the game Cyberpunk came out like a couple of years ago. Yeah. And you're literally they usually they use this movie as like a and so of course Blade Runner yeah. and all those megalopolis buildings. Oh yeah. But they're they're in that game, like kinda like these giant buildings yeah. that are like uh cities into into themselves. Yeah. So I, I, I dug it. I thought it was I, I thought it was an interesting um uh, way to tackle this, like make a ra- make a low budget raid movie. Well, Anthony Ruggs kind of just said what the movie is yep. about, but what happens in Dread in this version, 2012's Dread? Well, we also heard Ruggs' opening thoughts, so this yeah. is good. Yeah, we're mixing, we're mixing it up a little bit. We're mixing it up. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm drinking, so it's fine. It's fine. The uh, <laughs> what is this movie about? They well, we're into the future. I guess I think it's like 2080, and sure. there's these fucked up. The city, the East Coast, is all fucked up the world's fucked up based off like nuclear stuff yep, I don't really yep. know. nuclear and yep. there's these cities where there's a shit ton of crime and the police are now judge jury executioner and they're sent out and uh, carl urban plays judge dread he has a rookie on his team who's a psychic and he's taking her under his wing to evaluate her and see if she can be a judge even though she didn't pass the test and they get called into a crime a, a murder in a, a certain block, a peach tree. The peach trees. The peach trees, yeah, which is a giant building. And they get called in there, and it's basically like Assault on Precinct 13 type, yeah. where yeah. there's they capture somebody, but that person, the, the Lena Headley, who's running, who is the, the main drug lord, the main crime lord in that building, traps them in the building because she can't afford to let the person they've just caught talk about her 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 empire yeah. otherwise she would go to jail so the judges are trapped inside a building and have to fight their way out yeah of pretty the building. much well first time watching this anthony just learning about judge dread now well oh you saw the stolen movie what did you think of this 2012 dread I, I feel like carl urban has a very uh distinct way he talks throughout yes. the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh in all seriousness i i like the movie i thought it was it had a, a, a good, a, like a different style, you know, a little bit more indie, okay. kind of gritty, kind okay. of a visual flair to it. At, at times a little cheap. I mean, there, there's def- it's definitely CGI blood everywhere, which kind of annoys me. I always, I don't really like CGI blood, but yeah. you have the drug, which slows things down. Slow-mo. So they're not just doing, yeah. you know, bullet time for nothing. Yeah. I thought it was good. I thought it was a, a a very simple premise. I like Carl Urban in the role. I like I like the Dread character and the judges in general seem really cool. 
I thought it was good. I thought a, a very one of those things where similar to the eighties, nineties action movies, you just you you have a very simple premise, and the uh, the hero has to kind of bust his way out of it, and yeah. he's just tons of bullets and tons of fire, and it's just fun. It's a, it's a, it was a good movie. I liked it. Yeah, you know, I've seen, like I said, I read Judge Dread Comics and I watched the whole movie. I think I saw this movie once when it came out, but rewatching it again, I was like, this is a pretty decent fucking action flick. It's a, it's a focused story. It's a nice, tight runtime. It's only like an hour and a half. And Carl Urban yeah. is absolutely a badass. I love how he never takes off his helmet and he doesn't need to. The costumes look great. Uh, and it does. And it's kind of, it's, I mean, it's basically one day. It's interesting that they just confined it. To one location, like a couple hours. Yeah, yeah it's couple. like training day yeah. meets the raid. Yeah, yeah. So, and in crazy. in the comics, Judge the Judge Dread character really doesn't. He's always like the same guy. It is. It's a cross between like Robocop and John Wick. Even in this movie, there's very little character growth for him. But the, they cleverly put Anderson with him, the psychic, uh, mm-hmm. and she has all the growth. And she's a badass character. It's like Dread and Jean Grey from fucking X Men. Uh, mashup, uh, yeah. and uh, I I was like I love the music and just fucking violent. Uh, it is kind of a video game plot, but the the world building is they didn't do a lot. But Mega City One just visually in the beginning look crazy, just sprawling fucking city in these walls, and then you have these giant two hundred story buildings that are like little cities in the building, uh, which it looked great. Yeah, I have to say too. Just you mentioned the, thi- the 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 running time. When I saw it was an hour and a half, I went, "We need more an hour." Yeah, and a right? half movie. Are this you like great. relieved? I'm like, nice. Oh, I was so relieved so to see perfect. a ninety minute movie. <laughs> what happened to the good ninety minutes movies? They don't waste time in this movie, right? You get an action scene outside it, on the motorcycle. It is, it is has just enough to fill yeah. the ninety minutes. You get you get a little side twist with the the corrupt drudges and it's just right there. Everything is just that part was great too because uh, we get right right yeah. there. I mean, it reminds me a little bit of the pacing of Predator and those 80s movies where there were 90 minutes and they got right fucking into it uh, and they didn't fuck around. Yeah, the corrupt judges at first, you were like, oh, he's got help. And then the fucking then you're like, oh, no help. Uh, and apparently <laughs> the movie does pass the Bechdel test because of the lead antagonist, Mama and Anderson. Uh, the, the three tr- criteria are, of course, the movie has to have at least two named women in it who talk to each other about something besides a man. And I believe that absolutely happens when she captures her, right? What makes you think of the Bechtel test right well, now? Because it, it, the, the, the way they showed her... It's on the Wikipedia page. It's on the Wikipedia page oh, also. fucking guy. But <laughs> it, they, it's a good point because the, 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 the female character... She, it doesn't matter. She's a girl. Like she's held to no lower standards. She's just as badass. He's constantly asking her what she would do because it's her training day, uh, and he just lets her take lead. So I was like, "Huh, it's actually what's your sm- assessment." Yeah, it's like smoke grenades. Anderson, what's your assessment? And he does the fucking Robocop. You have twenty seconds to comply. Yeah. You have now ten seconds to comply. So I think Paul Verhoeven was inspired. I read somewhere that originally his RoboCop script was going to be a Judge Dredd movie. He was clearly inspired by the Dredd comic books to do RoboCop. Yeah, because it's 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 very uh, it's very in the same way. Vein. It's, a, it's a very it's it, unlike RoboCop. It's a there's no satire really element to it, but it's just a very well, straight so ahead movie. That's the one thing this movie is missing because in the comics there is a little bit of satire, right? Because if you look at this. There's a thing about over policing and police being judge, jury, and executioner now is like, oh, that's fucking crazy. But they're the heroes. This is taken straight and serious. And in this world set up in the future. You, yeah, the world's so all corrupt fucked, and up. fucked up. You need these judges to just fucking kill people. I don't think it needed. I mean, the satire might have added something a little a little different flavor, yeah. similar to RoboCap. But yeah. It's not like I watched this and went, man, something's missing from this movie. I felt like no. they, they had the 95 minutes yeah. and they packed every minute uh, as as well as they could. Yeah, the slow-mo shit looks great, too. Like the effects, I thought those looked pretty good when they did the slow-mo drug. And I love the weapon design. The weapons just look fucking cool. Yeah, I, I, I just remember when I watched it the first time, I was like, I'm going to buy it on Blu-ray and watch it again. Oh, see? And That's so. Good. So uh, that usually means I liked it when I if I go to the theater and I'm like oh I'm gonna buy this when it comes out on Blu-ray so I did 
Um, and it's a small movie. Come on. We, yeah. we have to like think about this. This is like a very small. This is thirty thousand dollars. So thirty million. Well, million. Uh, thirty million. <laughs> thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> oh my god. Thirty million dollars. I'd be filmed so, at Imran's house if it was thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. In my backyard. Yeah, it's like it's like El Mariachi. Yeah. Um, no, it's like thirty million. So that's like if you want a, another movie to compare to the Punisher War Zone, cost about that. I think. Maybe. Oh, there you go. Um, it's way better so, than Punisher War Zone. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it it feels like so much more of a bigger movie, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's for that much money. Do you get that much like world building and action and just badassery and explosions? I mean, they had like what four Gatling guns. Oh my god, yeah. the minigun scene is insane! <laughs> like she takes out a whole side of the fucking building. That that one's a little unreal. Like he yeah. outruns all those Gatling guns, yeah. but uh, it was a nice visual of them just blasting everybody. I love what they shoot. She's just not yeah. giving a fuck. They shoot across but the that, courtyard. That just some that just seems like a lot for a. A thirty million dollar movie, you know. Oh yeah, so, uh, they they took that budget and they stretched it as far as it could go. They made that do- They made every dollar count. Yeah. So I respect that. Yeah, 100%. I do because you got people who are spending two hundred million dollars on a movie, and you know they're they're not any more entertaining than this movie. They're like you know barely as entertaining. So. Um, the gray man was 200 million oh yeah that and yeah. this is like this i didn't know wow this is i mean this is solid like shit throughout the movie the action keeps going and and well you number one the great thing about this film is that judge dread yeah, is just yeah. a dude yeah right He's just a guy yeah just a and there's like guy. an entire building's worth of fucking cr- criminals coming, like, after, coming him. after him and he has to outsmart them yeah it's great and he has to kind of stay alive. He's got a psychic, which gives him a little bit of an edge. Yeah, that helps. But um, ultimately, he's just got to like kind of use his wits. I I love the little details where you know, like he shoots a lot of dudes in the head, but it's very John Wick. It's a very economy of bullets. But sometimes you see him taking out the kneecaps in a lot of them, right? He's not trying to kill everyone. He's just well, trying kids, to kill them. Oh, and then he stuns the kids. That's why I love that gun. You just say what you want. He's like incendiary. And then fucking shit blows up. Incendiary. It's so good. <laughs> Everybody lights them all on fire. Yeah. It's, yeah. The fucking gun is great. And like, yeah, it runs out of bullets and he's got a, but one man army. Going they do every, this. they do every, they, like, it's like not a ton of things that are revolutionary, right? Like right. he's a one man army. Yeah. He's, he's got to get out of this situation. He runs out of the bullets. He gets distracted by kids. He gets shot. Like the you know the corrupt police these aren't things that are all that new in the action genre, but it just they hit every note the way you should hit it in these type of movies and it just was very well executed and you had a very distinct visual style on top of everything yeah and you had Carl Urban being charismatic without ever showing his face and being speaking in a kind of a monotonous tone yeah I mean yeah and not really even having that many lines no, but he doesn't this is dread like you could just do it straight just like that he looks like the comic like his lower chin and his frown and the way he makes his mouth it's fucking looks just like he was drawn from the comic so I appreciated that it's very practical yeah and uh I like that. I like Olivia Thoreau in this too. She is very good. What does she do after this? I was like, what happened to this uh, Olivia Thoreau No idea. But she was in a couple of movies and then she just oh, disappeared. Oh, she was in Juno in 2007 before this. And then, uh, oh, she was in Why the Last Man. That's where I saw her. She was one of the leads in that one yeah. season of Why the Last Man and it got canceled. Paper Girls also canceled, by the way, on Amazon. Just thought I'd throw that in. Never finished it. Yeah, nobody cares about nobody it. Nobody cares. Uh, that's where I seen her. She is great. She's great as the character. What did you guys think of Lena Headey as the bad guy? Was she intimidating? You know? I feel like it was kind of like Joker esque, or, or actually more like uh, Two Face esque. But yeah, the scar was just badly done. It was distracting. I was like, eh, the whole scar <laughs> looks horrible. Anthony, what did you think of Lena Headey as the bad guy? Serviceable. I thought she was okay. I mean, she's way better as Cersei. Yes. She has way more to do yes. as Cersei. Yes. This one, she's all right. She's a pro- She's brutal. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really think too much of her, to be honest with you. I think they gave her a look. She's Lena Headey, so if you've seen Game of Thrones, you kind of have that cachet, but 
I didn't think like she was fine. I didn't think she like. Well, for her to be the heavy is kind of cool though. It is. Yeah, cool. it's, it's it's cool that it's 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 a woman as the heavy. Yeah. But I didn't think she had some sort of awesome performance. I thought she just did fine. That's how yeah, I, she was just kind of cashing a check. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, her, her being Cersei while she's doing this, I thought I expected a little bit more. So I was a little like, eh, I don't know about Lena. Like, she's fine. Like you said, she was fine and 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 vicious when she needed to be. The, the only criticism I had was you had the the guy that had the cameras everywhere. Yeah. And there's the point where Dredd is in the phone booth. And he's like, oh, he's in the phone booth. Right. Go over there. Right. And then he's still able to set up a trap with those guys thinking he was in the phone booth. Like, how did they not see that on the camera? <laughs> he left the phone booth. Nobody was looking at that point. I did. I don't I think guess. he was ever in the phone. Oh, booth. maybe he wasn't. He tapped into it. Yeah, I don't know. I remember. I thought he made, was in the phone booth for a little to make a call. Yeah. And they were like, we can trace him now. Yeah. But they, that but, was a trap. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That, I, that, there was a little inconsistency with the cameras because it seemed like they had cameras everywhere. But then Dredd would just, like, they would not be able to see Dredd. He would just come up out of nowhere. Shot I don't know. That was weird. But. How about the, the how uh, Mama went out her final, he shoots her in the head. She goes flying. Well, he first he he gives shoot her, her in the head. He, he gives her the slow mo. No, he doesn't shoot her. He in doesn't the head. shoot her. No, in no, head. no. He shoots her in the stomach and she threatens. To blow up the building if she dies. Oh, that's right. Goes, she he takes a, he takes a gamble that the signal won't work if he throws her down to the bottom floor. But then he he gives her the slow. He gives her slow mo, right? right? So, like he what she did to those three yeah. guys. Yeah. So and that part is kind of terrifying. Like you know, you are going to oh, die. You're, you're following two hundred stories, and it's happening in the slowest fucking way. It just I was like, this is terrifying. But then what I didn't expect is the shot from below ground of her face. Hitting the ground and just kind of imploding, like on a piece of glass. I was like, "Oh Jesus, that was kind of, <laughs> it's, it's brutal." That was a crazy. Yeah, they shot. get pretty brutal. Yeah. I mean, the movie starts out. The crime is three guys getting skinned alive, oh, right. given slow mo yeah. and thrown to their death, and, and they does, like, like smashed. Yeah. Doesn't he shoot like uh, a fucking flare into a guy's mouth and oh, it, like he does. melts his face? Yes, yep, burns he does. his face yeah. up to save yeah, the That's girl. the first. Uh, I think about the opening scene. Yeah, yeah. Where he close. I mean, there's one where he chops, cry, chops the guy in the neck, and I'm like, oh, the other <laughs> dread. He's like, chew on the, or whatever, whatever. He says, swallow. Choke this. on this, yeah. yeah. Choke on it's br- choke that's good, on it's this. It's brutal. Oh. Good brutality. He shoots him in the foot first, and then <laughs> fucking yeah. rams him in the throat. Yeah, there's some Wait. good kills there's in this one. There's some good I fucking mean, kills and some good violence. There's a well, murder. what did so this guy never did anything else after this movie? Uh, yeah, the yeah, director. That's strange. Yeah, let's see. He did, yeah, well, uh, it didn't make any money, so like no one was like, let's hire this guy. But I mean, they should really look at him to do something. That's else. the thing. I think when people came around to actually see this movie, they were like, "This." Well, Imran, good. he did uh, this movie called City of Tiny Lights in 2016, starring Riz Ahmed. Oh, I feel he like did, he would have been all over. Oh, that. he did a Riz Ahmed movie. <laughs> That's it. He's only done three, three films as a director, and then he's done a lot of TV. Fearless TV show, Project Blue Book. Yeah, he's working on a TV series. I wonder right why? Now. This, I mean, yeah, I guess it didn't make money, but he definitely brought. With the budget he had, he brought a, a definitely a distinct style to a film that, you know, it's a comic book movie. Yeah, like it yeah. could have been, it could have been any other, it could have been anything. I, and he, he, it looks, it looks good. I love the dark tone. Yeah, I love uh, the way Mega City looked. Apparently, this movie came out in 3D and it was shot in 3D, and the 3D was amazing. Is what I read mm. in a lot of reviews. They were like, "This is a great," and it's just kind of interesting. I like how it's like a self-contained story, right? They don't try. To set up a sequel or anything more, I would watch a TV show of this with Carl Urban about the judges in Mega City One. Wonder, uh, just wonder why Carl Urban never became as big an action star. We well, never saw his face. Nobody knew it was in. No, I'm just saying in yeah, general. In general, he's got a lot of good roles, and the guy. Well, he was in Lord of the Rings, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was, and he was also in Xena Warrior Princess. Yeah, a few times. but yeah, like, like uh. He, I think his biggest thing was uh, he. He was always like considered to be like a Brad Pitt lookalike, mm. or like confused with Brad Australian Pitt, Australian Brad so, Pitt, or something. Is he yeah. Australian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, New Zealand, New Zealand yeah. yeah. Well, he was in Doom. He was yeah. a lead in Doom. Yeah, I mean, he's done Star Trek, but he was Leonard. Hey, guys, just going back to the action thing. Guys, just don't. There's not a lot of guys that. Aspire to be just action stars. Yeah, he was anymore. good in the Star Trek. He had a good Star Trek role. But yeah, 
I mean, now he's, you know, in the boys. He's the lead of the boys. He's still sort of in the MCU, baby. Did he get killed? No, he's dead. They should bring him I back. I don't know if he's dead, but yeah. Yeah, he, they he gave died. him that shitty role in MCU. We could have... What a waste. A scourge. He was Scourge. I they got can bring this Scourge from, back. I got these guns from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can all... A place, can, place on Earth called Texas. <laughs> I think we can all also agree that this is better than the 95 Stallone movie. Would you say that? It's just a different time, but yeah, it's, I mean, I'd say it's better. In some ways, yeah. I, I In a lot of ways, it is better. Uh, I still like some parts of that still. I still like some of the, the design. I still like some of the the future world that they build over there. I mean, if you... T- I mean, it should be better, right? Yeah. It's made 17 yeah. years after yeah. a, a movie that, you know, people like now, but it, it's not like it's gotten... It's not something that's lived forever. That, that movie... It's remade because of it was. There's a reason why they remade it. Yeah, that movie has a low Rotten Tomato score. This movie needs more Rob Schneider. That's my only criticism. <laughs> Rob well, that's what killed the movie. Yeah, well, they made it. They they did the stupid Hollywood thing of making it fucking funny yeah. and like you know. But I mean, yeah, yeah, this was good. This was good this in good. that it really took itself seriously, yep. not so seriously that you couldn't have fun with it. But Dredd's character never never goes off the path of what they establish him to be. He's a no-nonsense guy. Love the helmet. Well, it's one of two things. Number one, they take it seriously, and they don't flinch when it comes to fucking violence either. Yeah. So, like, it just hits harder. So yeah, I think right. that, that it matters. Like, when you watch RoboCop, there was a satire to it, but they don't flinch away from the violence, even though there is... And so that that grounds it a little bit more. This is definitely grounded and focused story wise. Yeah, I wish we did get to see a little bit more of Mega City One, but uh, you know it makes sense the route they took to just keep it. Well, they don't have. I mean, they didn't have the budget, right? They didn't have well, the this budget. is the movie that we got, yeah. and it's it, it does lack a little bit, but I think it's because it was thirty five million dollars, and uh, whoever made it didn't really have the stones to like really go in all in on it. So still impressive effects for $35 million. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's rate the movie. We already ranked it against the other judge. Dread movie. <laughs> rate it. Anthony, give me a number. Final thoughts. I'm going to go seven and a half out of 10. Oh. I just think it's a very solid movie. I, I wouldn't say it's, you know, one of my favorites of all time. I'm not going to throw it on, Yeah, but I'll give it its props. It's a seven and a half out of 10. Well executed, simple storyline, easy to watch. Not gonna not gonna break any new ground, but has some style. There you go. Seven and a half. All right, good. I like it. Hey, uh, rugs? I'm gonna say seven. Um I like it a lot. Um I could go seven and a half, but then I'd be copying it to the score. So. <laughs> copy. uh, but uh it, I feel like uh I'll echo what Anthony said. I feel like for the for the money and for the time that you spend with it, it does deliver a lot of action. A lot of uh, world building, a lot of fucking just you get to experience like this whole new drug and all this stuff. And they don't like it's not like half baked. It's it's pretty baked. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Whatever they needed to cover, they covered in this movie. So I think that that's good. And a lot of, in a world where a lot of people have like half baked shit. Right. It's good to see something that at least works on, as, on its own as a piece. Absolutely. It's standalone. It's finished. There's no cliffhangers. There's it no... doesn't reinvent the wheel. It yeah. doesn't really, like, have, like, you know, enough money to really, like, take you to another world. And it doesn't have, uh, even though, like, the what they did with the costumes are okay, I feel like yeah, they were a little lacking. But um, it could have been this could have been a fucking amazing movie because the people that were behind it had so much talent. So uh, but it's good. Check it out. It's definitely worth looking. at. Uh, yeah, I agree. I really like this movie. I, you know, it's entertaining in the vein of your predator of RoboCop of John Wick. If you like those kind of movies, this movie definitely delivers satisfying. I'll give it an eight out of ten. I really enjoyed watching it again. Oh, wow. Carl Urban is fucking badass. And I, I would love I don't know if they're going to make a sequel if they talked about it, but fuck, give me a TV show, be good, or give me another, let them do Dread again. That, because the, yeah, they can make a series yeah, of this. They really just did like one story from the Judge Dread comics, right? This like, I don't know how story. many stories you could tell, but you could definitely do one season. There's a lot in this world of Mega City 1 to pull from, uh, but yeah, 
It would look fucking badass. And if you made this for $40 million, you can make a TV show. It would be too expensive to make, well, probably. You can make a TV show. That's good. But Apple do it. No, Apple will do it. They'll make anything. Nobody cares about Judge Dredd anymore. That's the problem. Or knows about it. Well, it's kind of like politically not the best thing no, to do to make it. No, that's the thing about the over-policing and kind of the brutality yeah, not, so little. I don't think the... the the time is not right. Yeah, people aren't want, wanting to see that right now. No. Unfortunately, it's yeah. just crazy how the attitude has changed. Like in the nineties, it was just yeah. like, yeah, we got to fucking do something about all these gangs and yeah. all this crime. Yeah. You know, the world's not a safe place. We need to fucking this drug shit's going getting out of control. Yeah, yeah. And now we're like, Ed, how dare you fuck with people who do drugs? <laughs> Let them either give them the drugs. Yes, leave yeah. them alone. <laughs> well, that that all kind of turned though in the '90s with the Rodney King riots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People started yeah. going, oh, yeah. We don't want like like we don't really like the police. Well, anymore. and then unfortunately, it continued to build right until no, present it never day. Never stopped. Yeah. No, yeah. It's it's just look. This shit was going. going on the whole time. Yeah. It just got but, televised. Yeah, yeah. So now we're really, uh, but yeah, it's crazy. Good stuff. Thank you, Colby Long, for your support and your movie pick. Well, even even just one more comment yeah. on that. Even this movie, yeah. they they have Judge Dredd, but they make sure to throw in the cops are corrupt. Right. They're paid off. Because you got the four. Yeah. yeah. You get the, the, yeah. So you, you, even this, they're not, they're, they don't take it all the way where it's the cops are great. But, dude, that moment where he makes her execute that dude right in front of her and she does it and then she meets his fucking family later and then she's like, well, fuck, I killed this dad. Like, he, he, he makes That's why her, she doesn't take it at the end. Right, right. He makes her follow the rule of the law. He, and he has a little bit of, tiny bit of compassion at the end, but he's largely the same guy he is at the beginning of the movie because he has a code. And she's gone through this great arc. So I appreciate that. It's a good movie. All right. The verdict is death. The, or the sentence is life. The ver- yeah. The, no, the crime is life. The sentence is death or something. There like, you go. Something like that. Something like that. All right. Good stuff. Let's do some news from great the job, nation. Imran. <laughs> Let's do some news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. The nation. It's time for news from the nation. <laughs> <laughs> Stinks! It stinks! That it was a wet. Stinks! <laughs> that was a wet fart. I think you oh have to boy. do the rest of the show as Carl Urban as Judge Dredd. What would he say? <laughs> Affirmative. You have twenty seconds to read me your opinion, Imran. You have ten seconds to begin the next segment. <laughs> oh shit! Or I will execute you. I'm, on I'm, the spot. I'll comply, Judge. Ten. Please calm down. Okay, we're moving you on. Have ten seconds to evacuate Five your seconds. rectums. <laughs> Three, two, dead or alive. Oh, that's the one. other guy. No, that's the other guy. That's the other guy. Don't you dare confuse me with that man in a tin can. That guy, he's copying my game. <laughs> Dread's the OG it's Robocop. Like a weird, man. He's, got a, he's doing a weird bail thing, but it's yeah. better than bail. Yeah, before bail. As Batman. Or, no, around voice. the same time. The same time, yeah. yeah. No, he's definitely doing a gravelly voice thing. But I liked it, though. It works for Dread. Uh, okay, I like got... it, as you can <laughs> see by my impersonations. <laughs> I have a comment from Lisa Morrison. She posted a graphic, and this will lead into what are we watching? Because this is about the latest episode of She-Hulk, episode four. And the graphic uh, has a whole bunch of pictures of Wong and points out every appearance and every property he's made. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight things. We've seen Wong in eight different things. And it says Wongers, the Wong Cinematic Universe. And we'll get to that. But she says, seeing this made me start thinking about all the great supporting characters in the MCU, as well as some of the not so great ones. So, Nation, who is your favorite MCU supporting character? Who is your least favorite? Why? Good question. A lot of fun. Uh, we have one response from Blake Braden who said, Lewis is definitely my favorite. I like Lewis. And then he gets, I guess, most disliked. I'll go with Sharon Carter, simply because I don't know if I like the direction for a character is going from in the Disney Plus show. Prior to that, I had no issues with her character. She's the power broker or something. Who knows what where her character is going? It is a little bit confusing. Uh, what about you guys? Any favorite uh, side characters in the MCU? Uh, favorite side characters? Hmm. I'm trying to think. I mean, Lewis is up there with like I love Korg. Korg's also great. Korg's funny. Uh, I'm trying to think who else are the side characters? You got kind of Yondu would be a fun side character. Uncle Rooker. Yeah. I'd call it more like Craglin would be a side character. Oh, Craglin is fun. 
Uh, Wonger is, is right now the number one side character, I think, for a lot of people. He's just in a lot. That's supporting. I think Rugboy probably hates uh, the guy that plays a Flash. Uh, Ezra Miller? Grant Custon? No, no, no. Flash, Gore, Flash oh, uh, Thompson. Oh, Ned Leeds? Jacob Ballon? What about Ned Leeds? No, no. Flash Thompson, you oh, fuck. Tony Revolori. Oh, I, ha- I, ha- I hate Ned Leeds. There you go. Oh, you hate Ned Leeds? <laughs> he hates yeah, Ned and the Flash. I, I like Jacob. That's no. He's one of my favorites. He's a ring no. slinger. He can sling magic. I think that, no. Peter Parker <laughs> should not have a friend. What about Flash? Do you like this Tony um, Revolori Flash? He's in the Willow show, by the way. No, I don't like him either. <laughs> Any side character Spider-Man. experiment. Yeah. Oh, I don't like <laughs> Uh, Trying to think who I would like. Let's see. I, I don't like. I don't like Aquafina either. Oh, you don't like Katie from Shang Chi? No, I don't like. I, uh, I didn't actually like Katie all that much either. Uh, I thought she would have so been more side character, annoying, but she wasn't. What side character do I like? I'm, for me, Korg Lewis uh, Wong. I like those, Korg. Are the, those are the top. Who would you say, Luis? Luis. Oh, Luis. Yeah, Luis. Louis, yeah. Louis. I like Luis. I like yeah. the way he tells the stories. Michael Pena is fucking hilarious, and we haven't seen. I him do in a like long Michael time. Pena. Like we haven't seen him in a bit. It's hard. It's a tough one. <laughs> it's tough. To, I can't. I'm just I, drawing I, blanks. I, I don't like uh, the other one from uh, Thor either. Darcy. Yeah, I don't like her either. No, no one really likes Kat, Darcy. Cat Dennings is. She was funny, but she's gotten kind of a. No, I'm over Cat Dennings big time. <laughs> okay. What about Heimdall? He's kind of a supporting character. That's fun. All right, I'll go with him. Oh, that's good. I'm trying to think, who else is there? I'm just drawing blanks on who the side characters are. Well, you are. think of, like every movie has a side character. You can put they like they all do. They, right? Every every yeah. Marvel character, every their their whole formula is creating a family of characters yep, around yep, a main character. Yep, everybody has a supporting favorite supporting character. Yeah, from can, your Happy I Hogan's so. to your Mbaku's. I'll go I, with Happy Hogan. Happy's I'll, good. I'll take I'll take Happy. I liked I like I like Sharon Carter. I don't know. You did like Sharon Carter. Oh yeah, I like okay. Sharon Carter. I like I like the way her character was in Captain America: First Avenger. I'd say, oh, I don't, I don't like. Although they, I don't know if she's classified as a side character. I hated Sharon Carter. What about Maria Wait, Hill? You, Do you just like said Maria you liked Hill? Sharon Carter and you hated Sharon Carter. No, no, I mean uh, not Sharon Carter. Uh, the other Carter, Peggy Carter, her, da- her ne- niece, Peggy. No, you were talking. Pe- Sharon's the niece. Oh fuck, that's what I meant. I don't like Sharon Carter. Oh, you like Peggy, but not Sharon. I like Peggy okay. a lot. Yeah. Uh, what'd you say, Rugs? That was a good one too. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, you said a good one. Oh, fuck. Me. Fuck, what did you say? Damn it. Anyways, there's a lot of great supporting characters. Go back for a while. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, this whole thing, let's just talk about uh, She Hulk episode four. What are we watching? Here's your spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Uh, this show, I got to say, it's a lot of fun. The show, this episode was a lot of fun, and they had a character that should have been annoying. Rugs, maybe you still find her annoying, but I thought they played it off with the Madison. Spelled with two N's and one Y. That's not where you think. Well, no. well not where like, you think. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, when she goes wongers, I love, I don't know why. I love that. A lot of people were like, she I thought. She spoiled Sopranos for him. Yeah. Oh, my God. She spoiled. People were mad. She spoiled Sopranos for a lot of people. If you hadn't watched Sopranos, those were all legit spoilers that she gave away. I just want them to do the opposite of this and do a dude yeah, who's a douchebag. It's, oh. Like, I want to see fucking. Yeah, like like uh, the situation show up. It, that's what it is, basically of, yeah. the opposite. It's, yeah, and then everybody would be cheering the situation. It wouldn't happen. It wouldn't. <laughs> but like, uh, it's basically what it is. It's just so stupid. She's but, blown up this past week. But yeah, I, I thought it, it worked. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't get it. I I, I didn't Longers. like it. Sorry, I didn't like it. Sorry, oh God, I thought Longers. it was. I thought it was kind of a throwaway episode. Yeah, if I'm being honest. Although I was pl- amused by the character. It's a uh, it's such a stereotype character. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, but it's like the kind of girl that like she's a party girl and she goes through dimensions and talks to a goat and at one point she has a heart in her hand and like doesn't bat an eye. That's like no big yeah, deal. I know. She's like whatever. Like that's funny. That's not what would really no, happen. No, it's fucking funny. No, I mean the show is not. <laughs> this show, like Marvel in general, is its own thing. But this show within the Marvel universe it's, is like yeah. is almost its own pocket. The way how 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 goofy it is like it's kind of like uh bill and ted's excellent adventure when they like go through like this thing and they're in peril and but they're just like such douche idiot douchebags that like like they just nothing nothing either nothing either shocks them or but they somehow 
just get through it from being idiots. Yes, yes. But and I'm like, are, we're doing this now. Yeah, but it's like charming. I guess in the show, yeah. I guess it's fine. But like, I don't know. I'm just I'm done. I'm oh like, my god! So, I was laughing. I was like, man, she's I, like, I was I, amused. I was amused. I had fun in the moment, yeah. but I'm I mean, like, what's, what like we, what's your favorite drink, Wongers? And they're talking about they're just hanging out. Well, like naming all. He, then he's naming drinks. Yes, to cosmopolitan. It's I guess it's fine in She Hulk. I guess in She Hulk of all places to do it. Um, it's fine, but like I'm just like I just don't like the response that people get to it, and like now all of a sudden it's like the now there's posters coming out with Wongers. <laughs> oh my god, it's just like this Madison. It's posters. just annoying. <laughs> I just feel like it's so annoying. But it continues just, to be ugh. like a good like a woman empowered show, right? With her being a strong female, like they're they they're staying true to their thing. Is it really like they basically base the character around Kim Kardashian, they which did. is the, probably the funny. the worst person ever, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the most reviled person of our entire the past 30 years for being rich, for just fucking getting plowed by Ray J. Um, but uh, Madison, though, already has more depth than Kim Kardashian. Yeah. yeah. Just in one episode. But it's just weird. It's just such a weird, like, you know, whatever. Uh, the other thing, we meet this magician. His name is Donnie Blaze. And then I saw these rumors. It sounds a lot nah. like uh, fucking Ghost Rider Johnny Blaze. I'm like, are they gonna make this guy the Ghost Rider? No, he's got. Where did he get this ring from? He's got a fucking sling ring. He was him? in. He he was recruited, and then he quit. Oh, right, he, he took was the a, ring. Right, he was a former sorcerer, and then he failed. It's kind of funny. I made a pact with a demon that I cannot discuss. Otherwise, he said he would reap my soul and the souls of all I love. love. <laughs> She's great. That's so funny. In the credits, you see her talking to like a goat uh, that she made that a what, deal oh. with. I think that was. I What's don't know. the end credit when she's talking about the drinks? Yeah, the end credit is them yeah. talking about Sopranos and what their favorite drinks are. Right. Uh, it's a good, I mean, it's it's silly, right? It's silly, it is yeah. silly. There's no chance. <laughs> Why would Wong hang out with her? Yeah, because yeah. they why love would, the Sopranos. Why, why would Wong? Love, and she's why would Wong? She, she just ruined the show for yes, him. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Why would he hang out yes, with her? Yes, she did. Because they can drink gin and tonics. Does he just sit around drinking booze all day watching Sopranos? It, it's clear they filmed that. I'm I'm reading it right now, and it's a little. They basically filmed it where them two are just riffing. Yeah. And yeah, they, they, someone improv. saw it and go, that's funny, and they yeah. threw it in. Yeah, that's what you do with end credit scene. It's fine. It's yeah. She Hulk. It's fine. It, whatever. But I'm just like, okay. <laughs> All right. I am whatever. also amused that, that it, it annoys Rug Boy. <laughs> I do. I thought it, it was. <laughs> it, it does. Well, it doesn't be. I, not that I don't, like, I care, but just, I don't get it. It's just like. <laughs> It's like because the show's trying to say all these things, mm -hmm. like uh, you know, about guys and how they're terrible and how like it's tough to be a woman and you know, blah blah blah. And then they, they all of a sudden you're celebrating like the shittiest kind of women, and it's just like all right, you know, and, and everybody's on board. And I just feel like it's so, it's just it's just so like brainwashy and like you're gonna like it. We're gonna make you like this. And we're going to make this. It's just like, whatever. Like, I don't know. It I never will, would I will, happen. I will say. Like, oh. the last time we liked a bimbo that was like, dude, was Joey from fucking Friends. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that was the yeah, last time. Yeah. You know, and he had some redeeming qualities. It's very you know? Joey Tribbiani, what, yes. What, what I was yeah. going to say, too, is I think I do find it a little interesting that the show is trying to be meta and smart and, and acknowledge the discourse and have, you know, kind of a women's. A women's show, yep. so it's trying to be all these smart things, but then you have this character who is just you just a, appealing to the lowest common denominator <laughs> with these laughs. Yes. I mean, it, it's so juvenile, yeah. but you know, whatever. Oh my god, the way it blew I don't up. take the show. The show isn't. The show is already with the last week with her twerking with Megan the Stallion, which I didn't mind either. The show has shown me that it doesn't really. It, it, it doesn't care yeah, what doesn't anybody care. wants. Exactly, it's just gonna do what it exactly. does, and that's, that's fine. That's I respect yeah. that they can do that. It's she all can do it. It's fine. Maybe it gets more substantial in the back half where we get to see Daredevil. I hope he's not all fucking jokey. Also, that would be weird. Like I don't care that they do it. I just hate the response to it <laughs> more than anything. Like, the like the dating bit was kind of funny too, where the guy was into her when she was She Hulk and not into her. It is odd uh, how people latch on to right little things like that. Little characters just blow up. It's like you know when they made Baby Groot happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I fucking hated that too. Maybe Yoda. It has nothing to Same like. Thing. It's just when they try and make moments happen. Yeah. 
like it's like fucking making fetch happen. You're not, and then people they they make fetch happen, <laughs> and then it's just terrible. Uh, okay, that's She Hulk. Uh, uh, Col- By the way, yeah, I am Groot. Has anyone watched that? I I've watched a couple. I did. Was it good? I haven't seen it. It's like uh, it is what it is. Whatever. It's, it's like, literally uh, three minute stories with two minutes of credit. Yeah, there's really hardly anything to really yeah rag mm-hmm. or talk it's about. Cute. Okay. It's very short. I watched two of them. I didn't watch the rest. I was like, I get it. Whatever. Right. It looks great, but yeah. It's nothing to brag about. It's, it's just it's, they're fun yeah. little Let me shorts. ask Ruggs one quick question just back on Madison. Do you think these moments are manufactured as in Marvel behind the scenes is floating, throwing this all on Twitter and then people pick it up? Or do you think it actually is viral things that people pick up? And I they- don't know. I just think that people like to like stupid things because they think it's cool. <laughs> you know, I'm like you go to a hipster place and they're fucking they're like uh, they're like steeping tea, like made out of fucking leaves that they found on the ground Mushrooms. because they think it's cool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Mushroom coffee is the new like thing. just they just do shit because I, I guess uh, the thing is, like everybody's figured out what actually is good. Mm-hmm. And now like they're like, oh, we can't. Everything's been figured out. We figured out all the cool shit. So I guess we got to make up our own cool shit. That's not cool. Like, it's just I don't know. It's just <laughs> it's very forced. It's yeah. very I feel forced. like it's a little it's bit of both like, things, Anthony. Honestly, like they were probably like, oh, my God, the it, social media is going to eat this up. You're going to be just, and then, just how crazy. You know, yeah. And then go. they probably plant some things and get some people to post some things. Right. And then, right. Then you, you know, like Twitter and yeah. Facebook and all like a lot of those followers are just bought. They're yeah. Made up things. So they just hype up the crowd. But it also happens to be. I it's just, it's just cringe. Yeah. Like there's a whole thing about cringe Internet, like of people <laughs> loving just shitty things. And I love shitty things, too. Don't get me wrong. But I like to. But it, when it when there's a groundswell of people liking shitty things, I start to go, whoa, why, why am I liking this? Am I, <laughs> do I really like this or is something going on here? He's conflicted. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how the show pans out. Let's move on to Cobra Kai. Season five was released just a few days ago. Watch update. Anthony, how many have you seen? I've seen two, so I know you've probably watched the entire thing because I don't know how you do it, but you do it. Uh, Rugs, I've seen two. How, Rugs, how many did you watch? Just two. I did watch the whole thing. Oh, it's Jesus an easy Christ. binge. They're half hour episodes, and it just goes Go outside. Oh man. my god! I was like, I have to finish <laughs> this. Uh, two episodes yeah. in. What do you guys think? We'll we will be we'll review it next week. Yeah. Yeah, we can review. Yeah, because it's really it is a quick. They're half, next week. Yeah, they're half it's hour four, episodes, four dude. It goes by you, uh, two, uh, quick. Uh, yeah, four hours left. You have it's to not watch. that bad, and like it's a, a breeze. Like there's no way it's, it's a breeze to watch this show. What I right. so far two episodes in. I mean, it's Cobra Kai, baby. Yeah. I, I I don't know what else to say. I will talk about it as soon as it's next back. week. But I I like it. I love Chosen. That's all I gotta say. Oh yeah, Chosen is badass. Chosen. <laughs> it's a. It, let, I'll just say this because we're only on two episodes. Me and Ruggs can talk about it. I never thought watching. I remember watching Karate Kid Part Two. Yeah, and loving that movie just as much as I love Karate Kid. Actually, and yeah. I love, I love Chosen and Danny Larusso's rivalry. I love the fact that they they took a movie Karate Kid and they upped the stakes and made it, you know, a life or death thing. I like the twist on that, and I thought Chosen was a, a, a great character in that movie. And I never thought I'd be rooting for that guy <laughs> right? in 2022. You hated it's just, him. It's just great. And oh, my God. There was a moment, though, where he's at the dinner and he's talking about how he wants to get revenge on Danny. And I'm like, whoa, I'm buying this. Like, is this what is That's tr- what I thought is- was going to happen. <laughs> oh, my I'm God. I'm with you. I thought, he was, I thought he was getting turned. Chosen said oh that? Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah, was yeah. going. They were talking about revenge and yeah. he was, like, really into it. And I was like going. Oh my God! They're he's flipping. Yeah, he's flipped them. Cho- no, chosen's a good dude. The, this show makes all those movies better. This this season even makes three like better, which is crazy. Okay, don't no spoilers. That's all I'm gonna say. Well, we will Eight review. I can't wait to review this whole thing next week. Let's move on to House of the Dragon. Are you guys caught up with episode four? I just watched episode four. I'm still you. into this show. I'm into the show. Uh, is it better than Game of 
Thrones OG. I'm not sure, but for hey, listen, it's its own show, and it's it's got me interested. So uh, I'm watching it. Anthony, did you watch four yet? You didn't. I have not. Okay. No, because I I had a little bit of time yesterday, and I said I'm gonna throw on Cobra Kai. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot to watch. Game of Thrones is gonna be there. Yeah. But we got, and I was I was basing on the fact that we got to review Cobra Kai next week. Yeah. So yeah, get it watched. No, four is fucking good, man. This uh, show is very good. I I also enjoy it. Cra- a lot of crazy things happen in a Game of Thrones drama fashion. Like there's no action, but fuck it, bad shit, big things happen. Uh, and they're still doing like little time jumps, so that's interesting. Uh, and then finally, I d- I know Anthony's not watching this. Rugs, have you caught up with the Rings of Power, Lord of the Rings? I have watched every episode of Ring of Power. Okay. Um, it is not as good as Game of Thrones. Oh, I'll put it that. I'll put it interesting. There. Okay, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, even though it's not as good as Game of Thrones, yeah. um, it's exposing me to things that I never thought I would see Whoa. from from the Tolkien lore. Was that like elf dicks? And uh, <laughs> uh, there's a city of Numenor. Yes, that was crazy. That was cool. And I was just like. I was just flabbergasted at how beautiful it, it was. It looked great. Like I was yeah. like, oh, if I could play this in a video game, yeah. if I could run through this level, yeah. I would fucking I would like explore every inch of this thing. It is fucking beautiful. It's like it's one thing like, you know, we're we're we have like beautiful structures and beautiful cities and beautiful things, but when you have some very talented people go Okay, we're going to take this and we're going to do it on steroids and we're going to make shit that never could actually be made. We're going to show you like how beautiful something could look. It is fucking crazy. Like the the sculptures coming out of the mountains and yeah, the faces just just the the epic, like just the way it's framed and it just looked amazing. I was just like, I know it's CG. I know it's CG. But it's a big show. It looks great. But yeah. it just looked magnificent, and I was like totally, I was totally uh, like engrossed by that. Um, is it as good of a show? No. Okay. Uh, Game of Thrones has got you by the balls. Yeah. yeah. Like the whole time, yeah. you're like, oh shit! Like, what's gonna happen next? Uh, how's this gonna interplay with that? And there's all these like chips and pieces moving on the board. Game of Thrones is like more of a mind game. Uh, Lord of the Rings is just trying to take you on this like adventure and slowly kind of unfold aspects of Tolkien. Yeah. And and that's a a completely different thing. So it's hard to compare the both. Like the feeling that you get when you watch game of Thrones is like, I want to watch what's going to happen next. Mm. I can't wait to see how this is going to turn out. And the gears are turning in your mind. Absolutely. When you watch uh, Lord of the Rings, you're just trying to be like, how does this fit into that? Oh, oh that's Who how are that these goes. People? Where are they now? Oh, what happened? Yeah, like <laughs> I'm like, oh, I didn't know that about these these guys. Oh, that's cool. So you just it's I, 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 the way it's uh, Lord of the Rings is you discover. Yeah, yeah. And Game of Thrones is more like tension yes. and sexy Dude, and the, the Thrones and a chess game. Yes, Thrones is so dark and adult and morally fucked up and this especially this last episode they are full on playing the game of thrones and it's enthralling to watch i'd like this uh the rings of power i'd like the the new episode like i said it looked great but it's uh i like that game of thrones is more focused in story and this thing like i said is slowly unraveling and it's fine but there's a lot of different people and different and there's some cool fucking monsters and orcs yeah, I don't think it's for everyone. I really don't. I've, but I, I I dig it, but like, yeah, I've read that a lot of Tolkien fans are like, it's not very Tolkien, basically. No. So there's that. But I never read any Tolkien, so it doesn't bother me. I think the biggest thing is that they are bringing other characters in, but those characters should not exist ah. in in this timeline. I see. So they're like. Or they're, they shouldn't be where they are. They're so they're kind of fucking with what Tolkien set up. I will say so far, House of Dragon is still winning the fantasy prequel wars at the moment, even though it's a big show. Yeah. Even the Rings of Power is a big but show. I, I, but Rings of Power is beautiful looking. Yeah. Who's got more? Who's got the better visuals? There would be Rings of Power, it, hands down. Yeah. Who's got the better drama? It's Game of Thrones. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good hmm. stuff. Uh, one little note: uh, if you want to hear more of me. Who doesn't? No. 
If you're not sick of me oh. already, I did. <laughs> I did do a guest appearance on oh. our on your boy Gerald Morris's podcast, Anthony. The peas, the two peas on a podcast is back. He took a little hiatus, took a little break uh, last year, but he's back with new episodes. And I'll put a link in the show notes. You can hear me right now. Hang out with Gerald. Discuss our top five Pearl Jam songs. Ooh, it was a whoa. lot of fun. Fun episode. Can I, can I throw mine into yeah, the ring give here? Give me your top five. Top five Pearl Jam songs. Elderly Woman. Okay, good one. Better Man. Okay, another good one. Uh, Given to Fly. Oh, that's like a newer one. Black. Yes. And um, I'm going to say uh, Release Me. Wow. So only one of those songs made my top five list. It's going to be black. Uh, but I'm not going to spoil it. You're going to have to go over there and listen <laughs> to me on two P's doing top five Pearl Jam. I love going over there and talking music. That's it for this week. Listener Rugs, where can the people find you online? You can find me on Twitter at really rug boy. I'll have them follow me. Give them a follow. Give them a poke. Give them a prod. Do something. Yes. Do it all. You can find everything in our show notes on our website. Visit there. And of course, make sure you share the show. Text it to your best bud while you're drinking gin and tonics, watching The Sopranos, going, Wongers! Oh, my God, Wongers! They're so cute <laughs> together. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for listening. I can't believe people uh, like it. It just gets so lame. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. It's so fucking lame. My name is Imran. My name is Anthony. He's the Jock. And he's the nerd. We'll peep you next time. I love Madison. I really don't give a shit. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's really good.